Hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is story about what if Naruto was becomes Hokage before the Chunin exams. Part 2. If you guys enjoy this what if. And want to see part 3. Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. The sand blew harshly against the walls of the Kazakija's tower as the Sunagakur Council had convened a special session to discuss the recent surrender agreement that arrived from the village of Konoha. It had been two days since the surrender talks and the document they received was not what they were expecting at all. First, it contained the information they had long sought since the failed attack, who was the fifth Hokage of Konoha. Many councilmen had assumed that one of the legendary Sanin would be chosen, while others had predicted that the copy ninja Kakashi or the man in the shadows, known as Danzo, would have been picked. So when they saw the name Naruto Uzumaki signed on the surrender agreement, many were shocked and confused, surely this was a joke. While the name of Naruto Uzumaki was already quickly spreading throughout the village as he had defeated Gara, the of Sun Agakur and one of their strongest ninja, they were sure that his age and apparent immaturity would have scared the fire daimyo from choosing him and surely would have prevented the Jonin Council from approving of the decision. It seems that wasn't the case. For the entire council, Naruto Uzumaki was the ultimate wild card. While some councilmen saw him as a weak young man who had gotten lucky against Gara, the others viewed him as someone whose real strength was unknown, which made them scared beyond belief. So without even taking a glance at the surrender agreement, the entire body erupted with discussion when it came to the Hokage. This has to be a fluke by those dogs known as Konoha. The chances of them making a gen in their Hokage is such a laughable proposition that the fact they expected us to believe it is insulting. On the contrary, age is just a number in the end. Naruto Uzumaki may be young and may have the rank of genin, but that does not indicate one's true strength. For all we know, the village has kept him at such a low rank so as to throw off any future enemies. After all, an enemy with knowledge of the ranks would go after the Chunin and Jonin before the genin. Um now, surely you don't expect them to think that far ahead, do you? Kanoha has always survived on numbers alone. They aren't smart enough to actually think of a plan such as that. Thinking like that is what made the invasion a failure in the first place. We overlooked Kanoha, especially since we sided with Orochimaru, which I remind you that as soon as we let our guard down around him, he struck down Kazuki Ajsama. The arguing among the councilmen escalated as they talked over each other, making their words unhearable and sound like gibberish. At the forefront of the table was the council head, an older retired Jonin who quietly listened to the arguments before he struck his cane against the table. That's enough. All of the councilmen quieted down and looked at him before they leaned back in their seats, knowing their arguments would have to wait, well we can argue all day about how or why the invasion failed, the truth of the matter is that this Naruto Uzumaki is now Kanoha's Hokage. But sir, it could be. It's not a fake. Not only is the signature authentic, but our spies reported that the new Hokage came as a surprise to the Jonin of Konoha and that the Jiraiya has been seen frequently around the Hokage Tower the past few days. Considering that our spies reported that this Yuzumaki was reportedly training under the Sanin, I believe we can believe that he is indeed the Hokage. The other councilmen looked at each other and scoffed as if they couldn't believe such a decision was reached. While that detail is important, what is even more important is the surrender agreement and what our next course of action is. The head councilman placed the document on the table as he continued. We must make a critical choice here. Do we accept the agreement and take our loss, or do we ignore it and launch a surprise attack on the shinobi who are escorting our own men back here? If we believe the new Hokage to be weak, now would be the time to strike, however, we must consider that he was made Hokage for a reason, and also consider that we currently do not have a cage to call our own. Everyone on the council looked at each other and whispered, many opinions were already sprouting, as many thought that agreeing to surrender was the smart choice, while others wanted to launch a counter-attack, while they thought Kanoha was still weak. However, one of the members only listened quietly, before he stood up in his seat, causing everyone to look at him when he spoke. To continue waging war against Kanoha is a fool's errand, I believe that we should accept the surrender agreement and move on. While many on the council nodded, some of the others were less than pleased. Surely you don't believe we will listen to the words of a man who was a part of the failed attack, or do you take us as fools as well Baki-san? Might I remind you that I was the only one on the council who was against an invasion in the first place, along with teaming up with Orochimaru. Despite my protest, I still followed through with the mission until we were forced to retreat. You're not helping your case, we're experiencing severe economic problems at the moment, and taking over Kanoha was the only way to remedy that. You're a fool if you believe that diplomacy is never an option and only war is the correct choice. 
especially since the invasion failed, we are now potentially facing even more economic problems depending on what was agreed upon. About that. The head councilman spoke as everyone looked at him. I believe it would be wise to read over the details of the agreement before continuing this bickering. After all, the only thing that we know was included was the prisoner swap, due to that being non-negotiable. Everyone seemed to calm down as they all nodded and looked over the agreement that had been laid onto the table, many of them were surprised to see the finer details, as it was completely different from the draft they had Kankuro and Tamari present to the Hokage. What is this? They expect us to send them a weekly supply of food and water, well we're already short. To be fair, they are offering to completely get rid of the tax tariffs on their products, considering that in the past we have bought many scrolls and ingredients from them, I say this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Oh please, even with that, we're still losing food and water. Don't they know our own people are starving, the councilmen started to argue with one another once again, as Baki carefully looked over the agreement before he looked at the head councilman who was staring at him, expecting an answer. Baki sighed as he pounded on the table, getting all of the councilmen to quiet down and look at him. To only focus on one aspect of the agreement will get us nowhere. Do remember that we were offering plenty of food and money up front, yet the new Hokage has made it to where it will be over a few weeks instead, allowing us to find other ways to gain money and food. Aki-san. Even so, finding a way to acquire the resources will take months, not giving us the time to meet these demands. Unless of course, you have an alternative solution to the problem. Aki looked over at the councilman who spoke as he nodded. I understood that, and so I made a proposal. The head councilman, now known as Mirli Yuki, looked at Mbaki-san, what is it? I propose that we accept parts of the agreement, but request that we rework other parts such as the weekly supplies and monetary payments. I propose that we accept the prisoner exchange along with the training agreement. The head councilman nodded as he looked down at the agreement and sighed, well they may be willing to rework the trade agreement that was included, I worry about the monetary payments, mainly due to the fact they wish for us to pay builders they have requested, so they assist in the repairs effort. That may be non-negotiable, especially if the young, inexperienced Hokage has already sent for him. Then I propose a meeting with the new Hokage. The meeting. Baki nodded as the entire council eyed him, no one making a sound as they waited for his explanation. Baltimari and Kankuro did an admirable job with the surrender agreement, I believe it was a mistake not to have one of our councilmen accompany them since even though they signed the agreement, we still have to approve it. I propose we send a notice out to Kanoha requesting a meeting between the Hokage and delegates from this very council to meet and approve a new surrender agreement. And who do we send? One of the councilmen jumped from their seat and looked Baki in the eyes as he yelled, everyone here has a different idea on how to handle this agreement. To entrust that decision with just one of us will alienate everyone else. The answer is obvious, we sent the head councilman, Baki spoke as he looked over at the head councillor as he didn't speak, awaiting a response from the one who had risen in objection. Well that could work, I believe it would be better for the Hokage to come here and meet with the entire council, after all. You're a fool. Baki yelled out as the councilman quieted down. Do you really expect the Kanoha would allow their Hokage to come here right after we tried to invade them? Not only that, we are the ones surrendering, it would be inappropriate not to go to their village for the talks. Also when we voted for the head councilman, we did so knowing that he was in charge of the village in case of a vacancy of the Kazakiage position, which currently we have won. The man didn't respond as he sat back in his seat, the entire council now quiet as they waited the response for the head. Baki-san. You are the one who discovered we were betrayed by Arachimaru when you discovered Kazuki Ajsama's body. Yes. That's correct. And you were also the one who reported the incident to the council, which promptly made us surrender to Konoha. That is also correct. You could have acted on your own and attempted to hunt down Arachimaru on your own, however, because you decided to report to the council, you were able to convince the warmongering fools here that we needed to surrender. Some of the councilmen narrowed their eyes as he continued. Therefore, I believe that I can trust you on this one issue. Meaning. Meaning I will gladly evoke my temporary powers and head off to Kanoha and discuss the other fine details of the surrender agreement and see if we can reach some kind of compromise. Many on the council wanted to object, yet they knew they lacked the power to do so, as the only one who could overrule the head of the council was the Kazakiage, who was no longer among the realm of the living. I see, shall I prepare a carrier pigeon? Indeed, inform the Hokage that I shall accompany the Kanoha Shinobi back to their village when they arrive here. Also, inform them that we agree to most of the agreement but wish for certain changes. Alright, I will do it. The head councilman nodded as he raised himself as he stuck his hand and spoke. This concludes the current meeting, you all are adjourned. Two days ago, Timasuma. He's the one who told us to meet here in an hour. Don't remind me, it's a drag, but what else can we do? Lunch it's a good thing I packed extra. 
Team 10 was sitting by the gate to the village, the guardsmen looking at them in confusion as they waited for Asuma to show up. It had been over two hours since he sent them off, even though he had told them to meet within just one hour of receiving the mission details. Oh, the sucks. Shikamaru, you should go try to find him. Are you crazy? By the time I'll return he'll probably already be here, which would just delay the mission even more. Besides, it would be a real pain to search all over this village for him anyway. If you're so impatient, why don't you search for him? Are you crazy? I wouldn't know where to look for him like you. Well then quiet down, you're giving me a headache. As Shikamaru and Ino argued with each other and Choji quietly ate his food, they were soon interrupted as Asuma could be seen walking towards them with a smile. Sorry for being a little late, guys had a few errands to run. Shikamaru and Ino both just glared at him which made him give a small laugh. Hey relax, relax, just making sure everything was in order before he left. Like what? Getting one last shot of drinks in. Ino placed her hand on her hips and stared at Asuma who held his hands up as he laughed. Hey hey hey, nothing like that, just some personal things that's all. Shikamaru and Ino both kept their glares on him as he continued anyway, as you all know, our mission is in the land of waves, where we are to escort a builder and his crew back to the village. It will be about a two-day trip, and there is a small chance we'll encounter some enemies, although we're more than likely safe until we acquire the builder. The three of them nodded, though Shikamaru and Ino still look less than pleased, though Shikamaru was slowly losing interest in being mad at him. Any questions? Yeah actually. Shikamaru spoke up as he placed his hands in his pockets and leaned against the gate. I know that the last time the Land of Waves was involved in a mission, the missing Ninzabuza and Haku were involved. Well I know they were both killed, what are the chances we find the other missing Nin? But I can't answer, the only details are that mercenaries are after the headbuilder, whether or not it's missing Nin or run-of-the-mill bandits is currently unknown. Of course, we will prepare as if it is missing Nin, just in case of a worst-case scenario. Shikamaru nodded as it was Eno's turn to speak. Speaking of that mission, the ones who killed Zabuza and Haku were Team 7 right? Yeah, that's right. I see. Ino seemed to think more a moment before sighing oh I bet Sasuke killed both of them and saved the day, didn't he? Shikamaru sighed as even Choji seemed a little annoyed, yet Asuma shook his head. No, not even close, Zabuza was killed by Kakashi, while Haku was killed by... Naruto. Huh? Naruto-kun? Ino seemed surprised, to say the least, as even Shikamaru and Choji raised an eyebrow. A are you sure it wasn't Sasuke? Positive, the only reason it wasn't made public was. Well. That's confidential. It was an obvious answer, it wasn't made public thanks to pressure from Jiraiya, so as to avoid the village believing Naruto was getting stronger. Of course, that plan went out the window during the invasion when it was known Naruto defeated Gara. though to the surprise of many, it seemed many of the villagers were grateful towards him. Confidential. Then why are you telling us Ensei? Ino tilted her head in confusion as Asuma stared her down. Because I get the feeling a lot of confidential stuff will be made public soon. Why's that? Asuma just kept looking at her before he gave a sigh and began walking as he signaled for the gates to open. Let's go guys. H huh? But sensei. He knows words trailed off as the gates opened as Asuma began walking through them. Come on, times after all. Don't want to be late. Be late. You're the one who was late sensei. Ino yelled out as she followed behind, along with Choji, yet Shikamaru kept his stare on Asuma as thoughts ran through his mind. I wonder. That information that's been confidential but won't be for much longer, why is that? Not only that but Asuma sensei seemed to imply it was all about Naruto. Hmm. I wonder if the reason that the district with Ichiraku was shut down yesterday was because. Hey Shikamaru, come on. Shikamaru lost his train of thought as he looked up as Asuma was waving him over, as he just nodded. Hmm. If that is the case, then this is interesting if anything, it does make me worry about Sasuke though, especially when he finds out. Shikamaru kept thinking to himself as he ran over to his team before they began their journey towards the land of waves, questions aplenty running through his head. Team 10 continued on their journey, hours had passed since they left the village, as not many words were said amongst each other. Ino was still wondering why the results of Team 7 were kept hidden, Asuma was hoping no more questions would be asked, and Choji was busy eating to keep his energy up. However, Shikamaru was running through various situations in his head about a possible worst-case scenario with Sasuke, especially if his hypothesis was proven to be correct. However as his thoughts ran through his head, he suddenly sensed something along with the rest of his team as they all stopped, Asuma taking the lead as he scanned over the area something's here. All of them stopped in place as they scanned the area, knowing an unknown chakra presence was nearby until. There. Asuma yelled out as he threw a kunai at a tree branch below them, only for it to be slapped away by some invisible force. Asuma narrowed his eyes as he jumped to another tree branch below as Team 10 followed him. 
show yourself. For a moment nothing happened, yet finally, on the branch in front of them, a ghostly figure began to come into view until eventually, they all could see it. The figure was dressed in old samurai wear, with its entire body wrapped in bandages, including all of its face. It wore an old straw hat with an unknown symbol on it. The figure didn't move or say anything as it stared at them, nobody making a move. As seconds flew by, the figure raised its hand and pointed at them, making the team prepare for a counter-attack. Are you Shinobi from Konoha? The figure had a deep ghostly voice, making all of them tense as Asuma replied. Who's asking? I believe it's proper to answer my question before asking any of your own. However, I suppose I shouldn't expect Ninja to know proper manners. The figure lowered its hand as it turned fully towards them. My name is Sheila, a samurai who has no home. Shisala. Do you know who Sensei is? Asuma looked back at Ino as he nodded. Yeah. He's a wanted criminal in several countries for assassinations. Come now. Shisala talked in a displeased tone as if he felt disrespected. I am a mercenary by trade, nothing is wrong with my craft. In fact, I am no different than you ninja, the only real difference is that the politics of your village control you while I live a free life. We don't go around killing innocent people for money as you do, that's the difference between us. Shisala snorted as he walked across the branch to the base of the tree. Nobody in this world is truly innocent, we all have committed sins, and thus we all eventually die because of those sins. I'm just speeding the process up for many of them. Shisala reached inside his cloak and pulled out a piece of paper. Judging by the way you're going, you're heading towards the land of waves, aren't you? I don't have to answer that. Of course. Then let me ask a different question, are you going there because of the bridge builder Tazuna? Asuma tensed up which didn't go unnoticed by Shalala I see. May I ask what business you have with him? That's confidential. I see. Well whatever it is, I ask it you stay out of my way. I have my own business to take care of concerning him, and I don't need ninjas like you getting in my way. So you're one of the mercenaries out for his life. I should be the only mercenary that's left. Asuma raised an eyebrow as Shisala snapped his fingers, as suddenly the world around them shifted until. What? Suddenly all around them were the dead bodies of several men, many of them wanted criminals that Asuma recognized. These are all the men that have come searching for the bridge builder, and every single of them have been struck down by my sword, no matter how many allies they brought with them. Asuma clenched his teeth as he readied his weapons, as the rest of Team 10 did the same. So. Even with this image you'll be willing to get in my way. HMPH, we're ninjas of Konoha who have been assigned a mission. We're not going to let some criminal stop us from accomplishing that. Your loyalty will be the end of you. Shisala unsheathed his sword and aimed it at them, as immediately Asuma could feel it. That sword is chakra embodied in it, I have to be careful around it. Everyone got into battle positions, but before they could attack Shisala spoke back up. Hmm. Four on one doesn't seem quite fair to me. Let's even things up. Shisala took his sword as it began to glow blue, as he seemingly cut a symbol into the air before cutting right through it, as suddenly three copies of him appeared beside him. What? All of Team 10 couldn't believe what they saw, but they couldn't worry about the believability of it, as now the tides were even. He can form symbols with his sword and then activate them with it. I've never seen anything like it. Heh, prepare to witness why I have cut down everyone who has come across my path. Asuma began channeling his chakra as he kept his eyes trained. Alright guys, let's go. Team Guy Kurenai. Now then. Guy, unless you have any questions you can return to your team while I see what Kurenai needs. Guy nodded as he patted Kurenai on the back and left the room, entering into the empty hallway. As soon as he had shut the door, Guy let out a sigh as he began walking, conflicted emotions welling up inside of him. While he would never disobey an order from the Hokage, he was still a bit on edge about guarding too soon a shinobi, especially since it hadn't been that long since the attack on the village. As he walked through the building, he noticed Jiraiya walking up the stairs as he gave a wave a Jiraiya sama. Still keeping up with your personal training. I gave a big grin, though Jiraiya didn't seem in the mood to talk as he kept his downward cast and walked on by not responding, making Guy raise an eyebrow. Hmm, must not be in the mood to share. Guy kept walking downward until he reached the door and walked out, the silence incredibly noticeable as the two teams stayed on opposite sides of each other, with Kiba trying to encourage Hinata and Lee having resumed his push-ups from earlier. As soon as Guy walked through the gates, Lee stopped as he got back on his feet and straightened out Guy Sensei. Have we received an incredible mission? Lee. You have to understand that every mission, no matter how small or big, is always incredible. Do you understand? Ah. Yes, I completely understand Guy Sensei. Everyone just sighed as Guy went to pull the mission scroll out when that was interrupted. Isn't that the Hokage? 
everyone looked up after Tenten spoke, and indeed, they noticed the Hokage was looking down at them through the windows, though they also immediately noticed that he seemed to be invisible, with only the outfit being present. Everyone kept staring at him as Guy instinctively saluted, which Lee did the same as soon as he saw Guy doing it. After a moment, the Hokage turned back towards the center of the room and walked back, vanishing from view. After a moment, everybody seemed to come back into reality as they all looked at each other, with Kiba being the first to talk. So that's the new Hokage, huh? Seems pretty small if you ask me. Henton looked at him as she spoke. Isn't it obvious? That's a part of the they're using, I hope you realize there was some since he was invisible. Hey I'm not stupid, I know that we don't have an invisible Hokage. Guy stopped saluting as he seemed a little relieved that the two sides were now talking to each other, even if only a little bit as he internally laughed. Heh, the kids would be pretty smart if he did that to help break the ice. As the conversation began to actually begin between the two sides, they were interrupted as Kurinai came out of the building towards them. Sorry I'm late, I had to ask a Hokage something. When Hinata looked at Kurinai, she just replied with a look that said sorry, making Hinata realize that she couldn't meet with him as she gave a downwards look and nodded. Anyway, has Guy explained the mission? Ah, uh, not yet, I was waiting for you to arrive in case you have anything to add. Alright, everyone line up. That goes for my team as well, line up beside Guy's team. Everyone nodded as they quickly got in line with each other, with Niji on one end and Hinata on the other. Alright listen up. Our mission is a prisoner exchange with the village of Sunagakur. We are to escort their delegates sent here to discuss surrender agreements, along with their prisoners, back to their village. Afterward, we are to escort our own villagers they have taken over the years back here as well. Any questions? Ah, Guy Sensei. Yes, Lee. What is it? Well, I'm not questioning you or the Hokage, I do worry about whether or not we can trust Suna at this moment. They did just launch an attack against our village, so I believe it would be too risky to walk into their village and return their prisoners. Guy nodded but didn't waver as he spoke. Well I understand your concerns, Hokage-sama seems to trust that they are fully committed to the surrender agreement, and in a way, I can understand. If they were to kill us or take us prisoner, then they would be trying to continue a war without their own cage, which could cause problems internally for them. It's better for them to surrender now and not try to continue the conflict. Ah. Of course Gai-sensei. I apologize for asking. Never apologize Lee. The only stupid question is one that isn't asked, remember that. Yes, Gai-sensei. Though Lee seemed to be convinced easily, the others weren't so much. It almost seems like the new Hokage might be throwing us out to dinner. Tenten quietly spoke to herself as Niji replied. I agree, it's short-sighted of him to assume Suna is wholehearted with their surrender. Kiba was the next to speak as looked at Guy's team. Ah come on guys, have more faith than that. I'm sure our new Hokage has a good plan in case anything goes wrong, right Shino? It depends. Huh? Depends on what? Depends on if he has learned anything since then. Uh. Learned anything since then. You talk as if you know who he is. Shino didn't say any more as Hinata kept quiet, not wanting to get into the arguments as Guy cleared his throat, regaining everyone's attention. We are to go and grab the delegates before heading to the gate, where the prisoners will be waiting for us. Guy had opened the mission scroll and read the instructions out loud as everyone listened. They are currently being held at a nearby inn. While the details don't say anything about it, I believe it would be best for one team to grab the delegates while the other goes ahead and makes sure the prisoners are ready, what do you think Kurinai? Yes, I believe that works just fine. Guy nodded as he folded the scroll up and placed it in his vest. Alright. Team Guy will go make sure the prisoners are under control while teammate will handle the delegates, any questions? After no one said anything, Guy got a big grin as he held out a thumbs up alright. Let's get this mission started. Tamari and Kankuro. It had been several hours since Kankuro and Tamari had left the Hokage Tower, and the entire time since then, they had barely spoken a word to each other. The same thoughts were running through their minds. Why? Why did the brat who defeated Gara have mercy on them? For their entire life, they grew up in a world where the weak ones die and the strong survive, yet here they are shown mercy. It just didn't make any sense whatsoever. Tamari was perhaps the most confused, she was already shown mercy once in the Chunin exams, and now she was shown mercy yet again. She didn't know how or why they lost to such a soft village, but she hated it. She hated that they took pity on her and Kankuro, as if they were weak, despite training their entire lives. That anger swelled up in her stomach as she gritted her teeth and gripped the curtain she was standing by, the village outside, seemingly taunting her as they went about their everyday lives. Yet after a moment she just sighed as she turned around and looked at Kankuro who was staring at her. Any words? Kankuro nodded as he walked over to her and handed her a scroll. Yeah, one of the Anbu agents just gave this to me. 
apparently, it has information on the ones escorting us and the like. PCH, like we need an escort. Tamari didn't like the idea of being protected, but she couldn't do anything about it, but accepted, which just made her even angrier, though a lot of that anger was directed at herself. Still, that is what we agreed to. Though I honestly think the main reason they are sending an escort is for their own prisoners that they will be returning back here. Doesn't mean I have to like it, but. I guess I'll have to accept it, for now, he did, after all, beat Gara and offer us mercy. Speaking of, how is he? You mean Gara? From what I heard he's still resting back in the village, though apparently he's been acting differently around the other medical nin. Hmm? How so? It's hard to describe, but from what I understand he isn't threatening them and is pretty noncommittal so far, not really talking and the like. Hmm, that doesn't sound like him at all, that's a bit worrisome. Kenkuro nodded as they both let out a sigh, however immediately after a knock was heard on the door before it opened to reveal an Andu agent. Their escort is here. DCH that fast. I didn't get to read over the info on them, brats not giving us a lot of time. Tamari narrowed her eyes as she spoke before walking past Kankuro and over to the agent before stopping. Go ahead and send off the surrender agreement to the village. I'm sure that damn council will want to change a few things. Don't worry, I already took care of it. Tamari nodded as she began walking forward. Then let's go. Kankuro followed suit as they followed the agent out of the building, with only one train of thought running through her head. What is that brat's endgame? Unknown location. The hallway was dark and quiet, the source of light being the torches at the very entrance, and nothing else as the long dark corridor extended into the abyss of nothing, a feeling of dread would fill anyone who entered into the space. Yet that illusion was quickly broken when the sound of tapping could be heard, the sound of wood hitting the floor, as a dark figure began to emerge from the darkness, flanked by two different Anbu agents on both sides of him. He quietly walked through the hallway, the sound of his cane making his presence known until he stopped right in front of a door, as one of the Anbu agents opened it as he walked inside. The room was filled with several Anbu agents as they all kneeled towards him when he walked in, the Anbu that were already with him joining the others in kneeling as he walked through the space in the middle, before he reached a chair as he sat down and looked over the agents before he finally spoke. As many of you know, a new Hokage has been decided upon. His name is Naruto Uzumaki, the one who holds the Kaiubi inside of him. None of the agents responded as he kept his gaze on all of them as he continued, this is both a gift and a curse. With the Kai Ubi now in control of our village, enemies from all over will seek us out to take that power for themselves, especially Orochimaru and the Akatsuki, putting ourselves even more in danger than we already are. Yet this is a gift as well, the new Hokage is young, and as such will need to be guided towards a brighter future, a future where Kanoha will rule the ninja world and stand on top of the bodies of our enemies. I shall be the one to guide him, as he will enact the vision I have for this village. Should he try to usurp me from doing so of course, then with him being the Jinchuriki, then it will be easy to dispose of him and therefore install myself as the sixth Hokage. I will need all of you for this endeavor, however, though I hope it doesn't come to a coup, as many great lives will be a loss as our enemies will see an opening and strike. However blood is necessary for the future of the world, and everyone here knows this all too well, as many of you have had to make sacrifices for this great village. If there is anyone here who objects to this initiative, speak now. After silence followed suit, the man smiled as he tapped his cane. Then let us begin, let us lead this village into the future. Let us rule the ninja world. All the Anbu nodded as they all sang out of course. We shall continue to follow you, Danzo Sama sir. Four against four, the mysterious samurai known as Shisala against Asuma, Shikamaru, Ino, and Choji. Asuma looked over the four clones, noticing how they each stood the exact same, not showing any apparent strengths or weaknesses. Neither side moved until Asuma held his hand out and gave a signal. Immediately his team all jumped in different directions, the four variations of Shisala doing the same, each one heading to a different team member. Keep your eyes open and search for a weakness in him. Asuma yelled out to the team as they all nodded, each one going to different parts of the forest to fight, as Asuma continued forward to the original Shisala, who just watched him as he spoke. HMPH, a ninja has no chance if he fights blindly. Immediately afterward, Shisala's sword glowed as Chakra ran through it as he swung forward, clashing with Asuma's kunai, as the two began attacking one another, each stealing hitting each other over and over again, neither gaining ground. However, as they swung at each other over and over again, Asuma couldn't help but feel fatigue, becoming more so with each hit of his kunai against the sword, until eventually the sword powered through and slashed his arm, cutting it open as he jumped back. What's wrong, have you already conceded defeat? Shisala taunted him as Asuma held his arm, trying to stop the blood coming out of it. That sword, the chakra in it saps my strength, doesn't it? Very perceptive of you, each time you clash with my sword, more and more of your chakra is sapped from your body and absorbed into my sword. 
Each cut by the sword saps even more chakra from the body part is connected with, meaning your arm should barely feel movable. Asuma gritted his teeth as he heard this, his arm barely moving as it limped beside his body, causing Shasala to let out a chuckle. The mercenaries who came through here put up a better fight than you, I hope that this is just a farce. Though without the use of your arm, you can't use any, can you? If you think I wasn't trained for situations like this, then you're mistaken. Asuma reached inside his vest and pulled out one of his trench knives as he applied chakra to it. HMPH, a poor man's imitation of a samurai. Shisala mocked Asuma as he began walking forward raising his sword for another attack, only the samurai can correctly infu ah. Before he could attack, Shisala backed up some as he suddenly held his hand, a large gash across it, as Asuma looked on with a grin, his own knife raised. What? Are you scared all of a sudden? How did you do it? The knife. How did you attack me from there with it? Shisala yelled out as Asuma chuckled as he pushed himself up, still holding the knife in his hand. I figured you had some trick up your sleeve, which is why I attacked you with my regular kunai at first, wanting to get a feel for your style. However, once you sapped the strength from my arm, it was too late to switch weapons in it. Luckily, I'm adept at fighting with both hands, that's how I hit you. But how? If you can't figure that out, then you can't call yourself a samurai. Asuma again raised his hand as Shisala took another step back, another cut forming on him as it appeared on his arm, making a jump back to reevaluate the situation. So that blade is the reason huh? Fine then, don't think I have to be right beside you to fight. Shisala took his sword as he infused more chakra with it, as he swung forward, the size of the sword expanding at high speed, causing Asuma to quickly block it with his own knife. Sapping more chakra from him as he jumped back. Haha, <laughs> fight long range if you want, it doesn't change the fact I will continue to sap your strength. Asuma narrowed his eyes as he brought his hand up to his face, as he then blew out a cloud of soot as it enveloped the area, including Shisala. Smoke screen, huh? I don't see before he could finish, Shisala noticed his open wounds burning, and soon enough they were burning extremely badly as his covered body began to sweat, causing him to jump backward, his wounds being burned so bad that the skin had melted back over them. Ah. Shisala looked up as the soot began to thin out, showing that Asuma was no longer where he originally was. Damn it, where did he go? Shisala looked around until Asuma appeared from above, causing Shisala to raise his blade and block the attack, though immediately he noticed Asuma smile before vanishing as another Asuma appeared behind him. A clone. Before he could react, Asuma slashed across his back, causing him to stumble forward as he jumped to another limb, a large gash on his back. Now I'm starting to wonder how weak those other guys were if you took them out as easily as you said you did. Shisala kept breathing hard, not replying until he raised his sword in the air as it began to glow with chakra, and almost immediately his wounds began to heal, making Asuma narrow his eyes. What? P, for what I may lack in physical skill, I make up for in endurance. I am unkillable thanks to my clones, each time they sap chakra away from your team, I can call upon that chakra to heal myself, and it seemed like they had quite a bit of chakra saved up for me. What? Damn it. So little ninja, as I said, you cannot kill me if you fight blindly. My clones can also call upon each other for chakra, healing their wounds and continuing on the cycle. We also will never run out, considering we replenish each time we connect to our enemy. Shisala laughed as he spoke, making Asuma grit his teeth as his mind raced to the others. Toji, Ino, Shikamaru. You guys need to win without making contact. Meaning we're the worst team for this guy. Now, are you ready for round two? Well, here goes nothing I guess. Asuma readied himself, hoping and praying his team could somehow cut off his reserves. Bino. Bino breathed heavily as she looked at her opponent, the samurai showing no emotion as he quickly took each of her attacks head on, making her feel weaker and weaker each time their blades connected to one another. She didn't know why though, she was only testing him to see if he would initially show any strengths and weaknesses, but instead it just made her arm feel weak. Oh? Feeling tired little girl. Shisala mocked her as he stayed still, not moving from his spot, despite the repeated attacks from Ino, which frustrated her. She knew she had to take it easy and not rush things, but the frustration was quickly taking over her body. In that case, I guess it's my turn. Not giving her a moment to rest, Shisala suddenly jumped into the air as he swung his sword, causing a sharp wind to blow at Ino, making her jump back. However, the wind was fast enough to hit the side of her leg, causing a slash mark to appear as blood quickly ran out, causing her to grab it when she landed. If you can't dodge a simple wind attack, then you have no right to call yourself a ninja. Shisala again slashed his sword as more wind rang out towards her, destroying the tree branches along the way as she jumped once again, however, she was able to avoid it this time. Which didn't go unnoticed by her. It was slower that time. But why? 
Hino landed on another branch as Shisala landed on one higher than her, his sword by his side, as he looked like he had exhausted no energy whatsoever. I need to find out about that sword of his, and he's practically begging for me to attack him so he can counter. Not wasting any time, Hino immediately closed her eyes and locked onto Shisala as she began to sense his chakra, and she immediately sensed the sword. This sword is chakra infused in it, yet it's not unlimited. Also unlike the original, this clone doesn't have any chakra itself somehow, meaning all of its power comes from that sword. But why is he? Wait. Hino immediately stopped focusing on the sword and then began focusing on herself. That's it. He's stealing my chakra. That must be why he's not acting now and why the second wind strike was slower than the first, because he needs me to attack him. Hino opened her eyes and readied herself as Shisala kept his unmoving position. Are you done praying to the little girl? Because sadly for you, no god of yours can help you now. Hino didn't say anything as she reached down for her belt and dug out a shuriken as she immediately threw it at Shisala, who easily deflected it away, yet right after she checked herself and the sword and noticed one thing so that didn't take any of my chakra away. Meaning only direct contact with things in my hand huh? In that case. Right after she threw two more shurikens his way and immediately followed them as Shisala easily knocked the two shurikens out of the way as Eno struck again with her kunai hmph, child's play. Eno just smirked at the comment as she suddenly pulled her hand back some before throwing the kunai, making Shisha jerk some as he raised his sword to block the incoming kunai, yet this allowed Eno to take a kunai in her other hand and thrust it forward, stabbing Shalala in the arm. Ah. What? Shisala swung down at her, yet she grabbed the tree branch to propel herself down towards a lower one as Shisala's sword struck the branch, allowing Eno to get to safety as blood trickled down his arm tch, bitch. Heh, as long as you don't connect to me, you won't be able to regain your chakra, so some illusion and long distance attacks will do huh? Very perceptive of you, many foes who stand before me never realize why they lose in the end, yet you seem to be one who will at least know why she's now six feet under. Shisala extended his sword as it began to grow in length towards Eno at a very high rate of speed, causing her to jump as it crashed into the tree. Yet that wasn't the end as immediately Shisala aimed the sword upwards as more slices of wind came upward, causing Eno to block as they hit her directly and threw her against another tree, immediately after Shisala returned his sword to normal as he flew at her, ready to strike and steal her chakra. Shisala struck forward and impaled Eno right in the shoulder as blood trickled down the sword and the right side of her chest, yet immediately he knew something was wrong. What's this? Why am I not refueling? As soon as he spoke, a nut hit him in the back of his head as he turned around and saw a squirrel looking at him as he growled. Damn rodent. Shisala flung his sword forward to slash at it. But. Nothing happened. His eyes went wide as his sword didn't change your attack. What? But I should still have chakra. Why is no ah? During his disbelief, the squirrel suddenly put its tiny paws together and immediately after, he felt a cut across the back of his neck as Eno slashed at it with a smirk. You didn't think I was dead did you? W what? H how? My mind transfer jutsu is pretty handy, allowing me quite a few opportunities to escape. Such as taking over a small animal to distract you before dealing the final blow. Shisala went wide-eyed as he coughed hard, blood pouring down his back as he fell and hit the ground below as Eno followed, landing right beside him. And no. W why was my chakra G gone? D did one of us need to heal. Eno didn't know what he was talking about, yet she didn't care as she saw him try to raise his sword, making her take her kunai and slash his hand off as he screamed. No. And not like this. The sword and hand fell to the ground as Shisala went limp, and soon after a blue flame enveloped his body and sword before vanishing, leaving nothing behind. Though injured, Eno just quickly applied temporary bandages to her wounds as she looked out to the forest all right, time to go help the others. Shikamaru. The two opponents quietly looked at each other, neither one making any moves since they had left the others, each one studying one another and preparing for an attack or counterattack. The only sound that could be heard was the wind blowing through the trees, not even the insects seemed all that interested in coming out to play today. Finally, the silence was broken by a small chuckle as the samurai Shisala spoke. You have some degree of intelligence for not immediately attacking me, which is a rare quality I often never see in my opponents. HMPH, honestly it's too much of a drag to go blow for blow with you, so I decided the best course of action was to wait it out. A drag ha. Huh? Who knew that the sin known as laziness could be considered an asset in a fight no less. You truly are one of a kind, though whether or not I would consider that a good quality or not is debatable. Shisala moved his sword up, the sun gleaming down on it. It would be rather easy to end you right now, my sword is fast enough that you wouldn't be able to escape its reach. Then why don't you do it? I find it rather odd that you've been waiting for me to attack you this entire time, usually, if you see an opening, you wouldn't wait for your opponent to strike. 
consider it a compliment to your abilities, and I'm simply taking a cautious approach. For someone who ridicules ninjas so much, you don't seem like someone who would take a cautious approach with us. I think the real truth is that you need me to attack you, but I'm not sure the reason, but I guess it has to do with the fact that if I don't, you can't use your sword, right? Chisala went quiet for a moment before a small chuckle came out. Fine, don't take my compliment, I'll simply come to you and get what I need the hard way. Chisala raised his sword as he jumped toward Shikamaru, who didn't move as he came closer and closer, until he was just inches from Shikamaru's face as he swung down. Gotcha. Shisala quietly said to himself as he slashed Shikamaru in the head, yet instead of being sliced in half, Shikamaru just poofed into a cloud of smoke. What? A shadow clone. However what was even more disturbing to Shimla was that a small piece of paper that looked like a tag came out of the clone, the end burning off. He immediately realized what it was as he tried to shield himself when. Boom. The massive explosion was heard from the tag as Shisala was thrown back forcefully into one of the tree trunks, parts of his body on fire from the blast, as immediately he felt his bones hurting and aching. He soon fell off of the tree as he grabbed a limb and pulled himself up onto it, his cloak being covered in soot as he was breathing heavily. Damn brat. Shisala raised his sword, and soon it began to glow as he started to absorb the chakra from one of the other clones, healing himself in the process. Well, whoever I'm taking from has quite a bit stored up already. We can't take from the host body, so we're screwed if all of the clones run out of chakra. As Shisala slowly healed himself with the chakra from one of the clones, he looked around, trying to find where Shikamaru was. Where the hell did that brat go? He stayed where he was until he got enough strength back, lowering the sword as he kept some in it for an attack, so he could force Shikamaru into fighting him. He slowly stood back up cautious, now knowing full well not to underestimate Shikamaru. Damn it, did he run away? I'm not much for running personally. Shisala looked behind him as he saw Shikamaru leaning against a tree, the same bored expression from earlier. I'd rather fight than run if I'm honest. You still don't appear to be taking this fight all that seriously, you are the very definition of a ninja who doesn't know his place. Well, getting all worked up is what you wanted isn't it? You take your opponents down by counter-attacking them and wearing them down, and in the process, you somehow grow stronger and can then start using your sword techniques, correct? You sound more like you belong in a classroom than on a battlefield kid, I've fought my entire life, and having that attitude of yours will quickly get you killed. The classroom? Please, I use that place as a bed pretty much. I'd much rather be out here on the battlefield, kicking the ass of idiots like you who think they can win by sheer force alone. Chisala gritted his teeth as he raised his sword. You're going to kick my ass. Let's see about that Keha. Huh? Chisala tried to take a step forward, yet he couldn't. He tried to raise his sword, but he couldn't do that either, all he could do was stand still and not move a single muscle. What? What's going on? Shisala tried to move, but other than some rumbling around, he couldn't, his body rejecting every command his brain tried to give out. He looked over at Shikamaru and went wide-eyed as he saw that Shikamaru's hands were together and that his shadow had actually extended out and locked onto his what? My shadow imitation jutsu allows me to take control over anybody or anything that I want, as long as I have sunlight and a host to connect it with. You were busy regaining your strength, so I quickly used them to lock you in place. It also helped that you were willing to talk while I did so. You brat. Let go of me at once. Eh, sure, after I take care of you. What? Shisala didn't know what he meant, but immediately his heart sank as Shikamaru began moving his body, while Shisala's own body started doing the exact same movements. What is this? Shikamaru didn't say anything as he moved his hand to belt in a clutching motion and held it up, which Shisala's body imitated, and the side that happened to be facing up had the sword in it, meaning the sword was right below Shisala's mouth. Any last words? You brat. Do you really think you're going to be able to kill me why? Scrunch. The sound of flesh being penetrated could be heard as Shikamaru raised his hand quickly, causing Shisala's body to do the same as it thrust the sword through the bottom of his mouth and out of his head, as Shikamaru released his technique as the body he was possessing fell over backward. Then vanished in a blue flame, leaving Shikamaru all to himself. Shikamaru sighed, not having any injuries at all as he looked out. Well, I need to regroup with everyone now. Joji. The sound of falling trees and the earth being crushed radiated throughout a section of the forest where Choji and Shisala were battling with one another. Choji repeatedly attacked, enlarging his body parts as he attacked and attacked, not slowing down as Shisala was always on the move, occasionally blocking to steal some of Choji's chakra, yet he never had a chance to catch his breath. Shisala's plan was simple, just have Choji keep attacking and continue to steal his chakra to wear him down eventually, it was the plan he had used for every opponent so far, so why should he change for one little ninja? 
yet despite the battle dragging out, Choji showed no signs of slowing down, never letting up on his attacks, which didn't give Shisala a chance to counter-attack and defeat Choji. He was able to store plenty of chakra in case it was called upon, yet he was getting slightly annoyed at not being given a chance to counter-attack. You keep attacking me, yet you're only hurting yourself. I don't see how this is beneficial for you. Hurting myself, huh? Says the guy who's dodging and blocking each of my attacks. Choji kept his attacks up, causing Shisala to stay on the defensive as he jumped backward. I need to create distance to strike him with my sword. Shisala jumped backward again as Choji jumped and attacked downwards with his hands as he kept moving, trying to create room. Thanks to that kid's persistence, I have plenty of chakra, I wonder if I have enough for. Shisala inwardly checked his chakra as he noticed something. I see, one of us needed to heal did they? If I had to bet, it was the host who was fighting against the leader of this team. Well because of him I need some more chakra for my attack, the one fighting that little girl shouldn't need too much. Shisala raised his sword as it began to glow, absorbing the chakra from the one fighting Eno as he turned towards a charging Choji. Take this. Human boulder. Choji's body suddenly turned into a human wrecking ball as it barreled towards Shisala, who just chuckled as he raised his sword, as if that would work. Samurai slash. Suddenly, his sword glowed a deep blue as he channeled all of the chakra in it as he threw towards where Choji was rolling, a massive ball of chakra heading straight towards Choji, still in his ball form. Now the eye, little ninja. Shisala laughed as he watched his attack head straight towards Choji, waiting for the impact when. Boulders can bounce, you know. Shisala heard Choji cry out as he suddenly jumped over the huge ball as he headed straight towards Shisala, who went wide-eyed at the display as he was forced to drop back, yet he wasn't fast enough as Choji hit him directly. Sending the samurai flying back as he crashed into a tree. Ah. W what? Shisala struggled to pull himself up as he looked where Choji had impacted, a huge mess of branches and holes now in his place, how was he able to dodge? The chakra ball should have been large enough not to be avoidable. Suddenly Shisala heard walking in front of him as he saw Choji walking towards him, twigs and dirt all over him as he glared at the samurai had enough. The FTE, like a little ball is going to be enough to stop me. Choji just gave a small smile as he scanned over Shisala's body. Are you sure about that? What do you mean brat? Choji just pointed at Shisala's body, causing him to look down and go wide-eyed. W what? Hovering his entire body was nothing but shurikens, blood leaking down to the ground like it was nothing as his body began to shake, his vision fading. When I hit the ground, I immediately unrolled and threw shurikens at you when you flew away. I knew you were easily countering my physical attacks, so I thought I would mix it up a bit. Why you? Shisala coughed as he fell to his knees, blood soaking through his outfit as his body began to fade until a blue flame enveloped it and soon nothing was left. Toji's smile faded as he looked back out towards the forest all right, I'm coming sensei. Asuma. Asuma looked at Shimla cautiously, already weak in one of his arms thanks to his carelessness, and he wasn't about to make the same mistake twice. His main concern was the sword that Shisala carried with him, allowing him to share chakra with his clones and also absorb the opponent's chakra. As Asuma sized up and looked for an opening, Shisala just shook his head. I must admit, you have survived longer than anybody else who has come face to face with me, for that, I give you much credit. I'll also be the one to end you. As if you could be a little ninja. Shisala slashed with his sword, causing a chakra wave to quickly come and strike at Asuma as he jumped up to avoid it, but Shisala quickly unleashed another one, making Asuma block it with his knife, which sent him backward from the impact. Impressive, but not surprising. I should be able to slice right through his sword, but the question is should I risk it? If I don't slice through, then he'll just steal more of my chakra. Shaking his head as he saw Shisala coming towards him, Asuma made his move. Taking his own chakra embed knife, Asuma shot forward as he sliced forward at the sword Shisala was holding, cutting right through it. Shisala let out a small gasp as he shot back with the broken sword, before holding the two pieces close together as the chakra melded it back together. So I can cut through it, but he'll just meld it back with chakra it seems. Still, that is good to know, I might be able to break through with a combo move. Asuma shot forward once again as he sliced at the sword, once again cutting it in half, but he kept going as he sliced forward again, cutting Shisala's hat as he continued to back up. Trying to shake Asuma off of him, he pushed the broken sword forward, making Asuma stop his attack to dodge it as Shisala molded the swords back together again with his chakra. So that's how you want to play, huh? I'll make a little ninja like you regret trying something so foolish. Something's not right, and all the records show that Shisala has a very respected way of speaking and never underestimates his opponents or plays around with them. So why is he doing that exact thing right now? 
However, Asuma couldn't think about this for long as Shasala turned his sword downwards as Chakra began to gather at the tip, and before Asuma knew it, Shasala flung his sword up and threw the Chakra energy as Asuma, causing him to barely dodge it as it exploded the tree branch he was on. Dodge all you want, I have plenty of Chakra to attack you with, my clones will make sure of that. Are you sure about that? All of a sudden, a third voice joined the conversation, and when Shasala and Asuma looked towards the sound of the voice, they were both surprised by who they saw. Shikamaru. Asuma yelled out to the newly joined Shikamaru, who was watching the fight from an adjacent tree. Sensei. I've come to help. Shikamaru yelled back out to Asuma who nodded. Good, this guy has been a pain so far. Asuma looked back at Shimla, who was glaring intently at Shikamaru. You. My clone should have dealt with you. Shikamaru gave a grin to Shisala's words before just shrugging. Your clone? He was a drag sure. But he wasn't the hardest thing I've ever fought against. What did you say? Ah, no matter. Once my other clones take care of the others, I'll have the advantage again. However, as soon as he spoke, a fourth figure showed up beside Shikamaru. I'm here, sensei. I made sure to eat on my way over. Toji, you made it as well. Asuma smiled as he yelled out to the newly arrived Choji, who gave a smile and a nod. Shisala, on the other hand, gripped his sword tighter impossible for two of my clones to lose. What about the girl? The girl is right here. A fifth figure emerged from the other side as Ino appeared, giving a smile to everyone. Well, it looks like the only one left is the one Asuma Sensei is fighting, huh? They all of my clones were defeated that's impossible. We're unbeatable with my technique. Nobody's unbeatable. Asuma said this as he eyed Shisala directly, raising his chakra knife, especially when you have a strong bond like my team does. No. I defeated teams before. Take the what Shisala tried to move, but couldn't as his entire body felt stiff w what is this? Man you're just like your clone. Shisala looked over at the sound of the voice to see that it was Shikamaru. You don't even notice the basics dot. Basic Shisala looked down as he gasped, Shikamaru's shadow connecting to his what is this answer me. Man what a drag, I've already explained it to your clone, I really don't feel like explaining it again. What? Good job Shikamaru. Asuma smiled as he spoke as he headed directly for Shisala, his knife raised. Now, I'm going to end this. Shisala just watched in horror as death got closer and closer, one thought running through his mind, but I copied him perf. Before the thought could finish, a crunching sound was heard as Asuma cut right through his neck as his head went flying into the air before it fell to the ground as his body soon followed. Wait here. I'm going to inspect the body. Everybody nodded as Asuma jumped down to the dead body of Shisala. As soon as he landed, he looked over the body and felt for any pulse or sense of life, but nothing was felt, not even the glimpse of a beating heart. Asuma gave a relieved sigh as he pulled out a scroll and opened it up before taking the bandages off of one of Shisala's hands as he dipped the fingertips in ink and placed them on the scroll, marking them. There, now I can see if you are the real deal. Rolling the scroll back up and placing it in his vest, Asuma took the hands and placed them over Shisala's heart before taking the sword and piercing through the hands and chest. Even still, a samurai deserves a samurai burial. After making sure nothing of importance was left behind, Asuma jumped back up into the trees with the rest of Team 10, and after offering good jobs and congratulations, the team set forth back on their destination. However, just minutes after the team left, two cloaked figures emerged from the trees near Shisala's body. Well that was a letdown, I was expecting a serious fight, not some ninja beating down on a samurai. It couldn't be helped, this was merely an imposter of the real one. Though he copied the technique and sword, he couldn't match the experience, mindset, and skill of the original. Oh. How do you know it's an imposter? Easy, because I killed the real one already. However, before I could add his body to my collection, he blew himself up. Lucky for me, it seems that someone was copying his trade to take his place. Oh. So master, are you going to be taking the body? Of course, he knows the skills and that sword can absorb chakra. He'll make a perfect addition to my puppet collection. What? You beat him without taking a hit Shikamaru Ino yelled out to Shikamaru who just shrugged his shoulders as he leaned back against a tree. It's not like he was all that tough or anything, he just liked to talk a lot, that's all. That's all I was lucky he was dumb enough to be distracted during battle, otherwise, I would have really gotten hurt. Well, I also matched up well against him, so. As Shikamaru and Ino talked, Choji was just listening to the conversation with a bag of his favorite snacks in his hands, the fight from earlier making him pretty hungry, as the group sat around a fire as darkness descended upon them. Asuma just watched the trio from a little ways away, his cigarette back in his mouth as the events of that day ran through his head. He fought overconfidently, he underestimated us, and he only relied on one style to fight. 
That's a complete contrast from his wanted profile, where it said he had many styles, never took anything for granted, and never underestimated any opponent. Asuma closed his eyes in thought, the possibility that they had fought a fraud becoming more and more likely, yet despite being a fraud, their opponent still was able to master the skills that the real Shisala may possess. That sword, in particular, the way he was able to absorb chakra with it. It's a sword I've seen around the Iron Country, yet it's impressive he was able to smuggle one out. Asuma sighed as his cigarette lightly burned as it slowly fell to the ground, bit by bit. Well regardless, we'll have some answers when we get back and present the prince to the forensic team and the Hokage. That last word made him open his eyes as they landed on Shikamaru. Hokage. The words that Naruto gave Asuma still lingered in his head. The retired ninja council has already recommended Shikamaru for the rank of Chunin. If Naruto followed up on the recommendation and promoted Shikamaru to Chunin, then it's possible Naruto would also assign Shikamaru a new position. It wasn't guaranteed that he would of course, but Asuma knew that the possibility existed. Sighing the last bit of his cigarette fell to the ground, Asuma walked forward a bit as he called out Hey Shikamaru. Huh? Yeah. Come here for a second, we need to talk. Shikamaru raised an eyebrow as he looked at Ino and Choji who just shrugged, not knowing what he was being called over for either. Sighing, Shikamaru pushed himself up as he walked over to Asuma. What is Sensei? Eh, take a walk with me. Shikamaru was again confused but just nodded as the two began walking through the woods, the moonlight illuminating them. You were impressive in that fight today, especially if it's true you didn't suffer any injuries. Well, I was able to distract him enough to where I could grab him with my shadow, it wasn't anything that impressive really. Still, the fact you were able to do so is an accomplishment, especially when you helped me out later in my own fight against the real one. Asuma gave a smile to Shikamaru who just shrugged. Well as I said, it wasn't anything impressive. But sensei, now that we're a good ways away from Choji and Ino, what did you really want to talk about? Eh, uh, always straight to the point. Asuma stopped as he looked at Shikamaru, who returned the look. During the mission briefing, Hokage-sama informed me that the council has recommended for you to be promoted to the rank of Chunin. Um. Me. Man, that sounds like a drag. Ah come on Shikamaru, you can't say that doesn't sound all that exciting. Well, it comes out of nowhere, that's for sure. Especially after how the Chunin exams ended. But I wouldn't turn down the promotion either, of course. Glad to hear. Though it should be stated that it was just a recommendation, the Hokage has the final say, though with how he talked, I doubt he's going to ignore the recommendation. The Hokage, huh? Shikamaru looked up at the sky as his thoughts began to run. Hey sensei, can I ask you a question? Hmm? About what? It's about the Hokage. Asuma just looked at him for another moment before he closed his eyes and shook his head. Until the public ceremony, I'm not allowed to. I've narrowed it down to two people. Two people? Yeah, thanks to some evidence I was able to gather. First off, this person is linked to Naruto, that much is true. Second off, this person came as a surprise to everyone, including my dad. Not only that, but apparently the delegates who talked with the daimyo were less than thrilled looking when they returned. Plus other evidence also points to two people. Asuma listened intently, wanting to know if Shikamaru could put it all together. Before we were called for our mission, I was going to get with Choji, Kiba, and Naruto to go eat and then train. However, we didn't know where Naruto exactly was, so we three were going to go eat before trying to find him. Yet the road to Ichiraku was closed down by, with the only official word being it was under construction, despite the fact people like Sakura were able to pass through there just fine the night before. I hope you're not basing your answer solely off that. No, it just plays into the bigger picture. Afterward, I went to the hospital and into Sasuke's room, yet I only found Sakura, and she told me that Naruto had not only left with Kakashi, but you as well sensei. I told her to tell Naruto to come find me after he returned, but he never did since he never came over as I had asked. However, my last two pieces of evidence paint the picture I think. Last two. Yeah, first is that apparently Kakashi was barred from voting, at least that's the official word, though it could be false because he was too close to the one they chose. Well that leaves plenty of options, the one thing that gave me my two answers was what you said sensei. Asuma raised an eyebrow as Shikamaru finished up with his final evidence. You said that a lot of secrets about Naruto are about to be unveiled to everybody that's not in the higher-ups, and to me, you would only unveil them if one of two people were chosen. The Kashi sensei due to him being warned about voting and also because he's close to Naruto, may unveil the secrets about him. However I think my second answer is more possible, as crazy as it sounds, and that is that Naruto himself was chosen to be Hokage. Silence followed Shikamaru as Asuma just stared at him, neither one saying anything as the wind began to pick up, blowing against them as the moon shined down upon them. However, after just a few moments, Asuma gave a small smile as he spoke. 
You're that smart, yet you never put it to use in school. So? I'm right. Asuma gave a small chuckle as he nodded. Yeah, you hit it right on the nose. Naruto Uzumaki is the fifth Hokage of Konoha. Shikamaru narrowed his eyes as Asuma spoke, a bead of sweat running down the side of his face. I know I deduced all of that, but... To actually hear the truth, it does make it somehow even harder to believe. Shikamaru looked down to the ground as a sigh he didn't know he was holding in came out. What? Do you have no faith in the decision? He was approved after all, hell I voted for him. No, it's... Well, I'm sure you don't care. Hmm? Is there a story between you two? Well, I have time to listen, after all, the sun hasn't come up yet. Asuma said this as he sat down at the base of a tree, Shikamaru nodding as he walked over and sat beside him. Odd as you know, all of the kids were told by their parents to never associate with Naruto. Whether your parent was a ninja or a civilian, it didn't matter, and you were not to interact with him. While many of the civilians did this because they blamed him for the Kaiubi attack, I later found out that the ninja, the higher up ones anyway, were pressured to do so by the village elites. Asuma nodded as he interjected. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure not to make any contact with him. Not from the third Hokage himself, but more so from the ones in the shadows, like the Anbu root leader. Yeah, that's what dad would tell me years later. Well despite being told this, Naruto did have friends, three of them actually. The public never knew about the friendship, hell not even the parents knew about the friendship for a while. Why were they his friends despite them being told not to associate with him? Well, it's because these three friends of his weren't really liked by the other kids either, and they also didn't really care what their parents told them. Because of this, one afternoon, these three friends came upon Naruto being bullied by one of the older kids. Oh? Did they now? Well, what were his friends' names? His friends. Were named Shikamaru, Choji and Kiba. Eight years ago. And take that you demon. A voice rang out as a young Naruto Uzumaki was whipped into a tree hard, falling to his knees as his shirt was cut open, blood dripping down his body as one of the older boys had come after him. That will teach you to try to get close to my younger brother. Naruto had tears running down his face, not from the pain, he knew what pain felt like from his training with Jiraiya, it was more because of the emotional pain he was feeling, because once again he was being hated on despite the fact he had no idea why. Yeah. Don't try to talk to me ever again Naruto. The younger brother yelled out as his older brother glared at Naruto, looking for another excuse to lay a beat down on him. I hope you understand your demon. Naruto cried some more as he looked up, tears running down his face wy. I I just wanted T to play and ninja w with you. You little, you think you even have a right to respond, the older brother kicked Naruto in the face, as he again grabbed him by the collar and threw him into the tree, causing Naruto to cry out once more as the older brother continued to glare. Wanting every excuse he could find to continue to beat on Naruto. Apologize. Otherwise, I'll have to give you my ten fists of death. I I. What? Speak up you demon. I I D didn't do anything. Naruto cried some more as the older brother balled his fist and started walking towards Naruto. Oh so now you think you can talk back to you well, I'll change that attitude of yours real far. What are you doing? The older brother was interrupted by a voice as he turned around and saw three boys around Naruto's age looking at him. What do you three want? I'm busy. The boy with a laid-back personality sighed as he walked forward as he stuffed his hands in his pockets. I asked what you were doing. What am I doing? Isn't it obvious I'm making this demon understand his place? The boy in the middle raised an eyebrow as he looked at the crying Naruto, all bloodied and teary-eyed as he laid against the tree. Huh, that's weird. I don't see a demon, I just see a boy that you're beating up for no reason. The older brother looked at the boy with a look of confusion before it returned back to anger. What? So you're going to take the demon's side. Well, in that case, that just means I have to take care of you as well huh, the older brother started walking towards the trio, yet the relaxed one in the middle didn't flinch as he spoke. Kiba. I'm on it. The boy on the right, going by the name of Kiba with a puppy on his shoulder, ran forward towards the older brother Akamaru. Let's get him. Woof. The puppy named Akamaru jumped off of Kiba's shoulder and latched its fans into the older brother's leg. Ah. What the a dog. Take this. Kiba reached forward and slashed the older brother's face with his claw, leaving a mark across it, as the older brother fell to the ground clutching his face, making the younger brother look on in shock. Hey bro. Why you'll pay for this? The younger brother ran forward to kick Akamaru off of the leg, but before he could. Choji. Right. The middle boy yelled out again as the boy on his left named Choji ran forward and shoulder tackled the younger brother, sending him flying as he hit the ground and started to cry. H hey. Leave my little be woe. The older brother was interrupted as the relaxed boy picked him up by the collar. Do me a favor and leave this kid alone, I really don't feel like dealing with you today. 
the older brother had tears in his eyes as blood ran down his face and leg, as he was dropped back to the ground, as he quickly got up and ran over to his little brother, as he picked him up and started to run. Off. Why you'll pay for this? The older brother yelled out as he ran off, leaving the trio and Naruto behind. Naruto just watched him in awe, never having someone stand up for him before. However, it hunkered down some as the relaxed boy walked over towards him as he looked him over before he spoke. So. What's your name? H huh? Naruto was confused, nobody had ever asked for his name before, they always just called him a demon and then either ignored him or beat him up. I asked what your name was. I it's. And Naruto. The relaxed boy just nodded as Naruto expected the worst, yet. That's a cool name. My name's Shikamaru. The boy known as Shikamaru gave a smile to Naruto who went wide-eyed as the other two boys joined in. Name's Kiba. This is my partner Akamaru. Woof woof. And I'm Choji. It's nice to meet you Naruto. Naruto just looked over all of them, astonished that they were being nice to him. So Naruto. Shikamaru spoke up as he extended his hand towards him. We were about to go to our spot, wanna join? A spot. Yeah, we go there every day after class. Choji brings the snacks, Kiba and Akamaru bring the toys, and I kind of just come along for the ride. You wanna come with us today? Naruto just looked between all of them as more tears filled his eyes, yet unlike the tears he had experienced up to that point. They were tears of happiness. Naruto gave a smile as he nodded why yeah, I'd love to. Naruto reached up and grabbed Shikamaru's hand as a new friendship between the group was formed. Present day. Asuma nodded as he lit another cigarette in his mouth as Shikamaru finished talking, the sound of an owl being heard after he spoke so, that's how you became friends with Naruto. Huh, I never knew. Yeah well, it wasn't really public knowledge like I said. We didn't really have a chance to hang out in school, and most of the time we would just head to our own private spot after school and just meet up there. Nobody knew about our spot and it was there that he hung out every day and just relaxed, not a care in the world. I see, well it's a good thing you did. You really helped set him up to succeed, hell I think all of you set each other up. The very first thing he did as Hokage was sending us all out on missions. Eh, just like Naruto, getting straight to work. Well, he is Hokage now so he can do whatever he wants I guess. Shikamaru let out a chuckle as Asuma nodded. Yeah, that's the truth. So, got any more stories you want to share? Eh, I have plenty, but. We should be going back, Choji and Ino may get worried if we're out here too late. Well I guess that's true, don't need them wandering off to find us, let's head back to Shikamaru. Right. A small fire crackled in the woods as its two occupants sat around it, each of them trying to find ways to pass time as one let out a sigh. Man, Shikamaru and Asuma-sensei have been gone for a long time. Do you know where they could have gone Choji? Beats me, must be talking about something. Choji filled his mouth after speaking with his snack as Ino gave yet another sigh. Man, they always talk about the most boring stuff too. Man, why couldn't I have been placed on a team with someone else? Someone like S-A-S-K-H-E-I. Ino let out a dreamy sigh as Choji kept eating. You really love Sasuke, huh? Of course. He's perfect in every way you can think of. Plus, I bet he would be doing something cool right now, instead of just talking in the woods. Even if he was, I don't see how that would affect anything. Oh come on Choji, everything changes when you're around the person you love with all your heart. Really? That's kinda cool I guess. Oh come on Choji, I'm sure you have someone you love, right? Choji stopped eating for a moment as he thought, trying to come up with answers well. I do think Anko sensei is kinda cute. Ha. Ah. Ino's eyes went blank as a sense of confusion swept over her Anko sensei. As in, the crazy lady over the Chunin exams. Yeah. If I had to be with someone, it would be with her I guess. Ino just stared at Choji with confusion as his answer slowly weaved itself into her head. I see. Well uh, good luck with that, I guess. Ino was really at a loss for words, she was expecting an answer like Hinata, Tenten, Sakura or Hell, even herself. Anko was easily the last person on her mind. Doji just gave a nod as a sort of thank you as he kept eating, the night continuing on as Ino stayed relatively quiet after that, her mind filling with images of Choji and Anko, which just made her even more confused as she tried to picture it. Eventually, Asuma and Shikamaru emerged from the shadows, causing Ino to glare at them as she sat up. Where were you two? You were talking forever. Ah sorry, I had to tell Shikamaru a few things, and we kinda got caught up in our talks. Ugh, I bet you were talking about boring stuff too. Haha, uh -huh, well maybe, maybe not. But anyway, even though we had a delay, we should be able to arrive by tomorrow evening if everything goes well. So we should go ahead and get some sleep and leave by sunrise. By sunrise? Really? Yep. Alright, good night everyone. 
Asuma gave a wave as he jumped up to a branch and laid down on it, while Lino just sighed in annoyance as she laid back down beside the fire. Toji also laid down beside the fire, putting his snacks back into his pocket beforehand. Shikamaru on the other hand just sat against a tree, thoughts running through his head about all the new information that had been confirmed. Not only is Naruto actually Hokage, but I'm going to be a chunin huh? Well, it should be interesting, to say the least. Still. It's a drag. As soon as the sunrise could be seen, Team 10 headed off, continuing their journey to the wave country where they would be escorting the bridge crew. The journey to the country was much less hectic than the previous day, though they ran into a few bandits and thieves along the way, most of them ran away when they saw they were trying to ambush ninja, and the few who were brave enough to attack were quickly taken out. Finally, as the sun got closer to the other side of the sky, the group came upon a large bridge with many traders and civilians passing through it. Typically, the first thing most people might notice were the increased number of personnel, as all routes leading to the land of waves converged into one, as they all linked to the giant bridge leading to the country. However, the first thing the team noticed was exactly what came out of Ino's mouth. The Great Naruto Bridge why is it named after Naruto? Asuma's first thought was that perhaps the country had somehow already learned of Naruto's appointment as Hokage and named the bridge after him as a sign of peace. However, that thought quickly lost his head as he remembered leading in the report that the bridge had been named after Naruto for his efforts during the battle against Tsubusa and Haku. Shikamaru and Choji both let out small smiles as they saw it, remembering how Naruto had bragged to them that he was going to have a bridge named after him. They thought he was just joking at first, but it seemed that wasn't the case. As Ino just continued to stare in confusion, Asuma just walked past her as he spoke. Well as I said earlier, a lot of information about Naruto will be made public soon, including the fact he was essential in helping win the fight against the hidden nin. So as a present, this bridge was named after him. Really? I thought for sure that Sasuke was the one who won that fight for the team. Haha, <laughs> as I said earlier Ino, Zabuza was killed by Kakashi, and Haku was killed by Naruto. At least, that's what the final reports say, maybe the actual result was different, the only way to find out was to ask one of Team 7 members yourself and see if you can tell the full story. I guess. Ino started walking behind Asuma as Shikamaru and Choji trailed her, the team entering onto the bridge and into the crowd. Still, I didn't think Naruto was all that strong. Well, looks can be deceiving. Don't forget that he defeated both Kiba and Niji in the Chunin exams, so he has a talent for sure. He's also been trained well, which you can see in his postures and the like. Yeah, but he's also the dork who played pranks all the time as a kid and always threw mud at the girls because we refused to go near him. Besides, Ino lowered her voice as she spoke. My parents always told me not to go near him. Shikamaru and Choji narrowed their gaze at Ino as all the memories of Naruto being abused came into their thoughts, the number of times they stuck up to the bullies and even later on when they had to confront their own parents about it. Asuma just kept his smile as he puffed some smoke. Well, people mature and grow out of old habits, no matter how childish. Naruto might have done some childlike stuff in the past, but I really believe he's grown into a fine young man so far. And if you don't want to take my word for it, just listen to the people around you. People around me? Sure, a lot of them are staring for a reason you know, they recognize what village we're from. Huh? Ino looked around, and indeed she saw many people looking at them and whispering, though some were also talking out loud as she caught wind of their conversations. Hey they're from Kanoha aren't they? Oh yeah. You can tell by the older one's vest and the headbands they all have. That's the village with the orange flash, isn't it? The one who saved the country, his name is Naruto isn't it? Yes, that's him. I wonder what he's like. Anybody who can take out some missing nin must be powerful and cool. I saw him walk by my house once. He's really dreamy if you ask me. What really? Oh, you're so lucky Albedo. Ino listened to all the people around them talking as she was incredibly surprised by how popular Naruto was, she was expecting Team 7 as a whole to be popular here, but instead, all everyone was talking about was Naruto. See what I mean? Though Naruto may still have a negative image in the eyes of many in the village, the people he's touched outside of the village shows that without the initial negative conception. He's really something else. I never knew, huh? Maybe there is something more to him than meets the eye. Asuma gave a smile to Ino's words as he kept walking across the bridge. Okage-sama, many people have a very negative view of you. It won't be long until it is public knowledge that you hold the most powerful position in the country and the absolute ruler of the strongest hidden village. I will do everything I can to make sure that perception of you is gone. Oh by the way sensei. Hmm? What's up? It's just. Ever since we've started on this mission, you've been speaking very highly of Naruto, mentioning him as early as when we were just at the gates ready to depart. 
I also find it a bit odd that you said a lot of new information about Naruto would be made public soon, is there a reason for this? Shikamaru tensed up some, hoping Ino wasn't catching on, yet Asuma didn't show any reaction as he replied. Well, it's because of the fifth Hokage. The Hokage. Is he close to Naruto or something? You could say that, no well, that may be extremely accurate. Hokage-sama knows Naruto very well, and because of that, he's going to be releasing a lot of information to the public that has been kept hidden, in an effort to show Naruto isn't this bad guy that everybody thinks he is. Does Naruto know about this? Of course, in fact, Naruto already knows who the Hokage is. What really? Then. It must be Kakashi-sensei, he must be the new Hokage. Asuma chuckled as he shrugged. Who knows? I'm not at liberty to say, Kakashi may be the fifth, he may not be. Whatever the case, I really do mean it when I say Naruto isn't a bad guy. In fact, I would say he has the potential to become Hokage someday. Oh come on sensei, I can believe that Naruto might be a little cool, but trying to make me believe he has even a tiny chance of becoming Hokage is a bit much. Asuma and Shikamaru both inwardly laughed at the irony as the team approached the end of the bridge. Well, who knows, people said the same things about the fourth Hokage at times. It all just depends on how fate guides you. The team stepped off the bridge and officially into the land of waves, as Asuma cracked his neck and looked back at his team. Alright, now we're close to the bridge builder's house, let's get going. Ah, so you're the ninja that the Hokage sent. The group was able to easily find Tazuna's house since it was stationed right in the middle of the town, as Asuma nodded. Yeah that's us, I'm guessing you're Tazuna. Yes that's correct, I'm the head builder of this town and a member of the town council which is in charge of all day-to-day -day operations. Please, come inside. Asuma nodded as he walked inside with his team following, the smell of fish quickly entering their nostrils. My daughter is currently making supper if you wish to join us. Ah oh, no that's fine, we don't wish to intrude. Nonsense. It's getting laid out and we were given warning of your arrival ahead of time, so it's not like we don't have enough. If anything we have more than enough. Asuma looked at his team and noticed they did seem to be a bit hungry, so he just nodded at Tazuna's words. Well if you insist, I guess we can eat a plate. Tazuna nodded as running could be heard from the kitchen as a small boy ran out. Grandpa. Are these the ninja you said were coming? Ah yes that's right, these are. Ah, my apologies, but I never got your names. Asuma nodded as he held a hand out. I'm Asuma Saratobi, leader of Team 10. Behind me are Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akamichi and Ino Yamanaka. It's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Tazuna shook Asuma's hand before giving a small bow towards the others who returned it. As you know I'm Tazuna, this little one here is my grandson Inari, and the one currently cooking supper is my daughter Tsunami. Inori looked at the group as he looked a little down as he spoke Ah, They're different from last time. Hmm? What do you mean? I mean it's not the same guys from earlier. I mean sure it's three boys and a girl again, but it's not the same. Tazuna nodded, understanding what Inori meant. Alright, last time it was the team of Kakashi, Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto. At least I think that's what their names were. Yeah. They were all really cool. Kakashi and Sasuke were mysterious, and Sakura was beautiful. Oh. But nothing beats how awesome Naruto was. He was amazing. Again Ino looked surprised as she heard the little boy boast about Naruto, adding to the ever-growing list of people from this country who seemed to love him, was he really that amazing? Yes they were quite amazing, but these ninjas here are pretty amazing as well. Oh of course. Ninja is awesome, I want to be one someday. Um. But I thought you said you wanted to be a builder just like your gramps. Well, I can do both can't I? As the family talked to one another, Asuma looked around, inspecting the small house when another person appeared from the kitchen. Father, dinner is Rio. It seems our guests have arrived. Coming out from the kitchen was a middle-aged woman with blue hair, a pink shirt, and a blue skirt, holding a tray of freshly cooked fish in her hands. Ah yes. Tazuna turned his attention to Asuma as he spoke. As I mentioned earlier, this is my daughter's tsunami. Pleased to meet you. Asuma nodded as he spoke. Azuna walked over to Asuma and placed a hand on his shoulder as he looked him in the eyes. You said your name was Asuma. I have something I wish to talk to you about, it's concerning the letter we received about your arrival. Ah, alright. Tsunami, treat everyone well until we get done talking. Ah, of course, father. Tazuna nodded as he led Asuma into one of the side rooms away from everybody else. Azuna allowed Asuma into the room as he shut it behind him and locked it, as he gestured Asuma to a chair as he sat across from him. Now then, Asuma Siratobi, I called you in here to discuss the letter that the Hokage sent to me. Alright, he mentioned that he would send out a notice for you. Was there anything important in it that we needed to talk about? Hmm. Well regarding the village repairs, my crew and I will be more than happy to help, hell we'll even give you a discount. 
Think of it as a favor to the Hokage for all the help he gave us in the past. Huh? You know about. About that Naruto kid becoming the Hokage. Heh, yeah he mentioned it in his letter, it was very informal actually. Now don't worry, he asked for me to keep it secret from everyone, including my own family, the only person he told me I could discuss it with was a ninja by the name of Asuma Suratobi, which you appear to be the guy. Yeah, that's correct. Well, I'm happy to hear about you being agreeable with helping with the repairs, but that can't be the only thing you called me in here to talk about. That's correct. I actually called you in here for a much more serious topic. Tazuna reached inside his jacket and pulled out a canteen as he took a sup, the smell of wine filling the air, as soon as he took the cap off as you know, we are a tiny country, so small in fact. That if any of the hidden villages attacked, we'd be crushed in minutes. Yeah, though Kanoha has pledged to protect you to deter other villages from launching any attacks. Though if I may be honest, this place offers no strategic value, even with a bridge. That is correct, however, that leads to a bigger point. We have no cage to call our own, we don't even have a daimyo, ever since the city council was established a few months back, they've been calling all the shots, and generally. This system of diplomacy with each member having as much power as the one across from them has worked wonders. However, we've had some disagreements on things, especially foreign policy, and because of that, the council wishes to elect a new leader. In fact, the one they wish to elect as the de facto head of the country is me. You? Yes, we are not a shinobi nation, and thus the council believes a civilian like me, who has helped bring great economic prosperity to the country thanks to the bridge, would be a great interim leader. Interim? Do you mean you don't wish for the job permanently? No, we just need someone to help guide our country while we are still independent. For you see, our council recently voted to join the fire country, or rather, they wish to be ruled by Kanoha. Huh? You want the land of waves to join our country and be a state rather than a country. That's correct, and it would be very beneficial actually, we would receive extra protection, while the fire country and Kanoha would gain a growing trading place that would surely help bring even more economic prosperity to you. Asuma looked at Tizuna as the dim light outside continued to get even fainter. Well, I have no say in whether that happens or not, though it should be noted that there would be many complications. First, both Daimyo-sama and Hokage-sama would have to approve of the annexation, and even then other factors would have to come into play. Such as the Land of Rivers, who have longed to take control of the Land of Waves, and while they are not allies with Suna, the fact is that Suna did just invade us, so should we get into conflict with the Land of Rivers, then Suna may support them in the shadows. I understand that of course, but the Land of Rivers is a big reason we wish to join your country, especially since our guards discovered their spies just a few weeks ago. We'll help rebuild Kanoha for free should you allow us, that much I can guarantee. Asuma just closed his eyes as he laid his head back, knowing that while the annexation had been talked about by his father, the third Hokage, he still remembered how his advisors had always talked him out of the idea. While most of those advisors were still present, he also knew that they were trying their best to keep him away from Naruto, so he could hire his own advisors and usher in a new generation of thinking. After a few more moments of silence, Asuma spoke. Well, if you assume the role of interim leader, then you will have to lead the discussions with Hokage-sama and Daimyo-sama, I assume this is alright. I expect it as much, and I'm prepared to do so if needed. Well then, I can at least get you a meeting, besides I'm sure Naruto would be more than happy to see you again. I see, thank you Asuma. Don't mention it, and I'm just doing what's best for my village. Plus, if word gets out that the Hokage was able to discuss a peaceful and welcome annexation, then that can help Naruto's image even more when he's revealed as the fifth. Tsunami, treat everyone well until we get done talking. Ah, of course, father. Tazuna nodded as he led Asuma away into another room, leaving Tsunami and her son alone with the three genins. The team looked around a bit awkwardly, yet Tsunami gave them a warm smile as she ushered them to the table. Please help yourself, I made enough for everyone. Hey ah thanks, Shikamaru spoke for the team as they all surrounded the table, with Choji immediately reaching for the biggest fish he could find, while Shikamaru and Ino awkwardly looked at each other. We're sorry for the intrusion, we didn't mean to force you to cook for us. Ah it's no trouble at all, I owe a great deal to your village, so it's the least I could do. Tsunami brought more plates of food over as both Choji and Inari were stuffing their plates, the two of them silently watching one another as they both tried to grab the biggest fish available. Although I hope you don't take this the wrong way, I was expecting the same team from last time to appear once again, especially since it's to guide my father. When you say the same team, I'm assuming you mean the team of Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, and Kakashi. Shikamaru kept speaking for the team as Tsunami nodded. That's correct, I owe a lot to them after all, so I was silently hoping that they would be sent once again to escort my father. I see, that makes sense, well I do apologize that we're not them. 
Oh no, please don't take it that way. I'm happy to meet some new people from Konoha, especially Shinobi. Tsunami gave a smile towards the group which they returned, feeling at ease from her pleasant tone. Oino began to remember the words she heard on her way over here as she opened her mouth to speak Hey um, can I ask a question? Um? Yes, what is it dear? Well. You keep saying you owe a lot to the previous team, but on my way over here, all I heard was nothing but Naruto mentioned. I mean even the bridge was named after him. Tsunami kept her smile as she let out a small chuckle as she placed even more plates of food on the table, as Joji and Inori kept their silent food matching contest going well, out of all of them, Naruto is the most famous due to him not only going blow for blow with a missing Ninhaku. But he's also the one who helps Abusa see what's truly most important in this world, which leads to him redeeming himself before his death. Huh? But Sensei said that Naruto killed Haku, and then Kakashi Sensei kills Abusa. Oh, I see. They've not told the whole story to you, have they? Well, I'm sure they have their reasons, so I shouldn't say anything more on the matter. Oh. Well I can get Naruto and everyone becoming famous for killing some missing nin, but why do people idolize them around here, again especially Naruto? Tsunami had a bit of sadness leak onto her face, though she kept her smile as she began pouring drinks for everyone. It's because they ended the time known as the Darkened Waves period. Darkened Waves period. Yeah. You see, before the Great Naruto Bridge was built, we were a small isolated island which relied on things such as trading and fishing for survival. That all changed however when a cruel man by the name of Gato invaded and took control of our shipping industry, using it to smuggle drugs and sell slaves. He broke our will by starving us to death, and... Tsunami paused for a moment as a tear ran down her face, as she quickly wiped it off, and by killing my husband, Kaiza. The mood in the room turned to one of sadness, as Inari stopped pulling his plate with food, as he looked down sadly at the ground, which caused Shikamaru, Ino and Choji, to awkwardly stare at each other with faces of regret, as Ino spoke back up I I'm sorry, I didn't mean. It's fine, that was in the past after all, and I've moved on, it's what he would have wanted after all. Still, to raise a son without the father around, that must be tough. Well, it's not the first time. You see, my first husband, Inari's father, passed away when he was a baby, and for a few years, I had to raise Inari by myself, as my father was often busy and my mother had passed away years before his birth. I met Kaiza when Inari was a few years old, but he was basically Inari's father as he did help raise him. I will admit, after Kaiza's death, it was hard for both of us but. It's a big reason that out of all of them I owe a lot to Naruto. He made us realize that we can't hold on to the past and that we have to value what we already have and what we already have is each other. Tsunami gave a smile to Ino who just nodded, her image of Naruto changing more and more drastically each second, it seemed w well, who knows, maybe you'll find someone else in the future, you still look young after all. Ino said it in an effort to cheer Tsunami up, so she was a bit surprised when she saw Tsunami gain a small blush as she nodded w well, that can always happen but sadly, the man I think of nowadays might be a bit too closed off for me. Ino looked up at her in confusion, yet her paranoid side began to take over as one thought ran through her head. Is she in love with Sasuke? Shikamaru on the other hand, after listening to her speak of him, had a different thought. Oh man, is she in love with Naruto? Toji tried to think of someone as he ate when he thought must be Kakashi sensei, he has that mask after all. Shikamaru and Ino, both of them looked at each other in confusion, neither one knowing what to think. They wouldn't be able to think on the matter much longer though, as the doors opened and Tazuna and Asuma walked back out, as Asuma looked at his team and spoke. You guys better eat up, because first thing in the morning, we're heading back home. Shikamara nodded as he looked at Tazuna. Guess your crew already knows. Tazuna nodded as he turned and headed to another room yep, they'll be here first thing in the morning. Asuma watched him leave as he sat down beside Shikamaru as he gave a smile to his entire team. You better be ready when you all get home, because I have a feeling Hokage-sama will want to meet with all of us. Ino raised an eyebrow as she looked at Asuma. Why is that sensei? Asuma looked at Shikamaru, who raised an eyebrow as Asuma placed his hand on Shikamaru's shoulder. Well it's because of this guy's future, right Shikamaru? Oh really what is Shikamaru? Ino looked at Shikamaru in anticipation as Choji also seemed to stop eating as he waited for an answer. Shikamaru sighed in annoyance as he looked at his team and casually said. It looks like I'm going to be promoted to Chunin. Oh really that's great. I'm happy for you for once. Ino did seem genuinely happy as even Choji gave a nod of approval, though Shikamaru just sighed as Asuma inwardly laughed. Who knows Shikamaru, with how close you and Naruto seem to be, he may just have something more important for you to do, especially if he can help forge the annexation request. Heh, it's going to be an interesting next few days. The truth. About the day you were born and the Nine Tails Fox attack. 
The air seemed to grow thin as Jiraiya spoke, sending a chill down Naruto's spine as he looked at him dead in the eyes. The day I was born? What about it? Naruto, you were never supposed to know this, at least not for a long time. But with you suddenly becoming Hokage, it's your right to know the dark truth this village has been hiding from you. Naruto narrowed his eyes as Jiraiya turned and locked the door as he walked forward. First, this is top secret information, and while I can't tell you what to do, I recommend not telling anybody, at least not the full story. Naruto nodded as suddenly a puff of smoke appeared beside him, an Anbu agent with a dragon mask kneeling beside Naruto Hokage-sama. Ayaya. Naruto was a bit taken back from the sudden appearance of one of the agents, especially since he hadn't really seen any of them since he became Hokage. First, I apologize for the delay, but I am Dragon, and I'm in charge of the team that personally guards you every minute of every day. Second off, I am aware of the information that Jiraiya-sama is about to tell you, and I ask for your permission to seal this room off while it's discussed. Naruto looked over to Jiraiya, who just gave a small nod, making Naruto understand alright, that's fine, do what's needed to keep this information secure. Understood. Dragon vanished as soon as he appeared, and immediately the room darkened, the only things visible were Naruto, his desk and Jiraiya. Now Naruto, I must first ask you, do you know of the demon that attacked the village 13 years ago? Yeah I know about it to a degree, but I don't know the full story. All I know is that the fourth Hokage sacrificed himself to kill the demon and save the village, that's why the old man was back in charge shortly after. Well, that's partially true. Jiraiya sighed as he walked forward and sat in the chair in front of the desk, the darkness closing in on them as they looked at each other eye to eye. The fourth Hokage did indeed sacrifice himself, however, his sacrifice didn't kill the demon, it just sealed it. Sealed it? Yes, for you see, when a tailed beast is sealed within someone, that person becomes what is known as a Jinchuriki. There are nine tailed beasts, meaning there are nine active Jinchurikis. What's more, each of the five hidden villages has at least one Jinchuriki, including Kanoha. We do? Wait, does that mean our Jinchuriki contains the nine tails? That is correct, the Jinchuriki of Kanoha have the nine tails sealed in them, or rather they have what is called the Kaiubi contained in them. Kaiubi? Yes, the name of the nine tails. Now as I was saying, the fourth Hokage sealed the Kaiubi away from someone, ending the attack on the village. The person he sealed the Kaiubi in was his own newborn son. Naruto raised an eyebrow as he was a bit taken back, not knowing that the fourth even had a son. His newborn son. I didn't know the fourth had a kid. His son was his only child, as both the fourth Hokage and first lady perished in the Kaiubi's attack, both of them sacrificing themselves to seal the beast in their son. It's tragic really, I knew them personally after all. Huh? You knew them sensei. Jiraiya nodded as a sad smile appeared on his face, memories filling his head. Of course, the fourth Hokage was actually my student, just like you are Naruto. Him and his wife were the perfect couple, they were most happy when they were with each other, and together they were unstoppable as a team. That's kinda cool, I wish I got the chance to meet them. Jiraiya bit down on his lip as he just nodded. The thing is, you have actually met them. You were very young, and it wasn't for very long but. You have met them before. Oh, well 13 years ago was when I was born, so I guess I was just a baby myself. What were their names? Minato and Kashina Namikas were what their names were. Minato was called the Yellow Flash, while his wife Kashina was called the Red Hot Habanero, which were both very appropriate names for them, due to Minato's speed and Kashina's temper. Ureya let out a nostalgic laugh, as Naruto gave a small smile. I see. Well, what was their son's name? After all, if he's the Jinchuriki, then I should meet him personally, actually, he should be around my age. Naruto. Huh? What? No, I wasn't calling for you. That was his name. Naruto's eyes started to go wide as Jiraiya stared at him intently. Naruto Uzumaki, the fifth Hokage of Konoha, the son of the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikas. Naruto's eyes went as wide as they could, his mouth following suit as he just stared at Jiraiya, his mind not wanting to accept the words he just heard. W what did you just say? You heard me, Naruto. You are the son of the fourth Hokage, and you are also the Jinchuriki of Konoha, forever destined to carry the Kaiubi inside of you. Naruto's body shook as he just stared at Jiraiya, not knowing how to react as he couldn't move. It was the third's decision to not only never tell you, but to never tell anyone else. D the old man. Yeah, he never wanted the secret about you being the fourth son or the fact that you were the Jinchuriki to leak out to anyone. However, even without the truth becoming public knowledge, you were still blamed for the attack and became a monster to the people of the village. You were the perfect scapegoat, after all, the demon child that was born as soon as the Kaiubi was sealed, the child of death, the child of calamity. 
it was a select few at first, however, these select few were high-ranking ninja, and their influence eventually helped spread it out to everyone in the village, making your life growing up a living hell. And no that can't be. Naruto gripped his hand as he continued to shake, tears filling his eyes as he looked down. Naruto, this is why I tried my best to train you and help you understand that fear was what was driving people to hate you, not anything else. They never hated you because of who you were, they hated you because of the circumstances surrounding your birth. Lies, it has to be. Naruto slammed his hand on his desk as more tears ran down his face. I'm the so-called Jinchuriki. I'm the son of the fourth Hokage. Even if that is true, you're expecting me to believe that even when the village started to hate me, the old man never did anything to stop it. That's not true Naruto. He did everything he could to help you. That's why I stuck around because I wanted to train and raise you. I wanted to at least give you that. Then why not move me to another village, somewhere where I could grow up like any other kid? Because. Because the village needed to keep you. If they lost the Jinchuriki and it became public knowledge, then none of the other hidden villages would hold back and immediately begin planning to launch an attack. You can't say this isn't true because Suna just attacked us. Don't forget that you just fought against their Jinchuriki and Gara. Naruto continued to shake as tears ran down his face, his Hokage hat falling off his head and onto the table as he lightly pounded it before he looked up, his red puffy eyes making contact with Uraya so, I was a weapon to the higher-ups, that's what you're saying. That's it. It's fine, I understand. Naruto wiped his eyes off as he tried to straighten himself as he grabbed his hat and looked at it. You taught me not to ever blame the villagers and I'm not going to do that. But I am going to blame the ones who did their best to undercut the old man. Naruto, don't fall for revenge and hatred. It never leads to the right path. Don't worry, and I'm not taking my revenge the old-fashioned way. What do you Jiraiya was cut off as Naruto raised his hat back up and placed it on his head, giving a small smile to Jiraiya. I mean that the best way to get revenge on the ones who blamed me for everything is to be the one thing they never wanted me to be. A leader. A leader who won't ever put the blame on others, a leader who will take responsibility, a leader who will lead the village to the future. A leader who will judge fairly. Naruto gave a bigger smile as he nodded, Jiraiya incredibly impressed by the maturity Naruto was showing. However, Sensei, I need help to take that revenge, so. How about it? What? My first hire is Hokage. I want you to be my personal advisor. Personal advisor? Heh, sorry kid, but that's a no-go for me. Huh? How come? Well, that's obvious. Jiraiya gave an even bigger smile than Naruto's as he spoke. I'll be spending my time watching over you and doing my research, I don't have time to sit in an office all day. Naruto laughed as he nodded. Well, I guess that's your decision. Then let me give you an order and not an offer. I order you to tell me everything you know about my parents. Please. Gureya just nodded as he gave a thumbs up of course, I can't deny an order from the Hokage after all. However, do remember what I said though. Uh, what's that? It's this. Like I said at the start, I wouldn't tell anyone, at least not the full story. I believe that telling everyone you're the son of the fourth is the best option right now, we need to build up support for you before announcing you as the fifth Hokage. Meaning we keep the Jinchuriki part still a secret for now. Right, that does make sense, that would only make them more opposed. Yeah, we'll start slowly giving out information soon. But first, you've had a long day, how about some lunch before anything else? Ah yeah. Ichiraku, here we come. Naruto went to signal for Dragon to appear, but before he could, Jiraiya spoke back up. Oh before that, I actually have something to give you. A present of sorts. Jiraiya got up from his seat as the darkness around them widened a bit as he walked over to a locker that was in the corner of the room. As soon as you were picked to be the Hokage five days ago, I immediately had this custom made. It took almost all of my money since I needed it done in just a few days, but it was well worth it. But first, a present. From your father. Naruto let out a small ha as Jiraiya opened the locker and picked up a box inside as he walked back over to the desk and laid it on it. Your father always wanted to pass this down to you when you were old enough, I had to patch it up some and clean it, but other than that, I've not done anything to it. Naruto nodded as he pulled off the lid to the box to reveal a blue shirt with matching blue pants underneath it. What is this? This is the outfit your father wore almost every single day, it's a bit rough, but it should fit you, though it may take a year or two to grow into it fully. Naruto picked up the shirt and held it up as he looked it over, not even realizing a tear was in his eye, until he felt it run down his face, as he quickly wiped it off. My father's clothes. These were the clothes my dad wore. Yep, sure are. As I said, he always wanted to pass them down to you, and I remember sitting at the table with him just gushing about how happy he was because he was going to be a dad and how excited he was to live your life with you. 
Gureya looked away as he felt a tear of his very own try to enter his eyes, as more tears fell down Naruto's face. I see, that's what dad wanted huh? Naruto wiped his face off once again as he tried to keep his composure, yet everything was hitting him at blinding speed, and the realization was finally hitting him. His parents really did love him. He had always been told that his parents had died in the Kaiubi attack and that they were very caring of him, but he never really felt that they loved him. Until now. As soon as he grabbed onto the clothes, he felt just a plethora of emotions fill him, from sadness to happiness, to joy, to love. A love he had never felt before in his life. Naruto felt himself shaking again as he laid the shirt down and sat down in his chair, tears running down his face and onto his robes, as he pulled his hat down to hide his face, not wanting Jiraiya to see his tears. However, it did the opposite, it instead hid Jiraiya's tears from Naruto, the both of them trying to keep their compassers, as the memories of the past tried to take over Jiraiya, while the tears of realization took over Naruto. After a moment, Jiraiya was able to get a hold of himself as he turned back towards Naruto, who was still looking down, as Jiraiya walked over and placed a hand on his shoulder Naruto. Your parents wouldn't want you to cry right now, and they would want you to be happy and keep pushing forward. After all, you are the fifth Hokage, are you not? Naruto didn't say anything for a moment, however, he soon raised his head as he wiped his face off once more while you're right, I need to stay compassed. Naruto cleared his throat as he looked back down at the clothes and just gave a smile, this wasn't something to cry over and be sad about. This was something to celebrate and enjoy. Oh, you said you had something else for me sensei. Yeah, this is kinda based off of your father, but I added my own little twist to it. Jiraiya walked back over to the locker and pulled out another box as he walked back over and laid it on the desk. Your father always wore a white cloak with red flames, with the words fourth Hokage written on the back. So, I used all of my money like I said, to make your own variation of it. Naruto raised an eyebrow as he opened the box and went wide-eyed at what was inside. Inside of the box was an orange cloak with black flames adjourning the sleeves and the bottom of the cloak, with the kanji for fifth Hokage written on the back. Naruto was speechless as he took it out, amazed at the design of it. Minato never enjoyed wearing the robes all the time, so he had a cloak made for him when he was going into battle or just walking in public. He only wore the robes during formal meetings and of course during his public ceremony. I figured this would be good for you to wear, since you're not really one to wear robes all day. Naruto just kept looking over the cloak in astonishment as he yelled out to this is amazing sensei. It looks so cool. Eh, glad to hear. As Naruto kept admiring the cloak, Dragon suddenly reappeared beside him. Okage-sama, you have someone requesting to meet with you. Huh? Who? Kakashi Haddock sir. Oh, Kakashi-sensei. Go ahead and let him in, you can also stop securing the area as much, we're done talking about any important matters for now. Sir. Dragon vanished as soon the room lightened back up to its regular lightning, as a knock was heard on the door, as Jiraiya opened it to reveal Kakashi. Kakashi-sensei. Everything alright. Kakashi just nodded as he looked at Jiraiya and then at the cloak in Naruto's hands. So, it seems like you two just got finished. Kakashi directed his question towards Jiraiya who responded in a somewhat low voice. Yeah, I told him everything from the Kaiubi attack to who his parents were to the fact that he's a Jinchuriki. Kakashi nodded as he walked over to Naruto. Naruto, I want to apologize. I was never allowed to tell you anything about your past, so I hope you don't harbor any ill will towards me. Of course not sensei, well I am upset that nobody told me, I can understand it to a degree I guess. But that was in the past, and now that I know, there's no reason for you to be worried about me being mad, you were just following orders. Yeah, everyone in the village was. Right, so anyway Kakashi-sensei, what did you come here for? Well, first of all, didn't I say for you to stop calling me sensei? Naruto gave an awkward laugh as he scratched the back of his head as Kakashi sighed. Well anyway, I came here to tell you that Sasuke just woke up. What really? Naruto had a huge smile suddenly take over his face as he bellowed out to Kakashi. That's awesome. Oh, I have to go see him right away. Hold on there hotshot. Kakashi held a hand up before continuing. I would advise against anything to aggravate him, he did just lose a match to Gara after all, a match he won by the way. Naruto bit down on his lip as he took a deep breath. Right, Sasuke is not one who takes losing well. Another thing, remember that you are under heavy protection, so if you are going to go see Sasuke, at least let the Anbu set up a security perimeter first. Naruto nodded, having to remind himself that he can't just go wherever he pleased at short notice anymore. Right right. Naruto thought for a moment as his eyes landed back on his cloak, an idea coming to him as he stared at it, wondering if it would be smart to follow through with said idea, before deciding that it would be for the best. Hey Kakashi-sensei, as I did with Aruka, I can tell anybody I want I'm Hokage, right? Kakashi knew where this was going as he nodded. 
Well of course, as you've already been told many, many times, you are above the law. Really you are the law if you think about it, so to speak. Naruto nodded as he looked over at Jiraiya sensei, I need your help changing. Alright, I'll go get your cloth. No. Naruto cut him off as he grabbed his father's clothes. I want to fulfill my dad's wish and wear the clothes he always wore, even if they are a bit big. Jiraiya looked at him for a moment with a surprised look before it melted into a smile. Alright, if that's what you want. Naruto nodded as he looked back at Kakashi Kakashi Sensei. I want you to travel with me to meet with Sasuke. I I plan on telling Sakura and Sasuke. I figured as much. I guess they are your teammates, if anyone deserves to know, it's them. Naruto nodded as he took the hat off and laid it on the desk, as Kakashi walked over to the windows and looked outside, watching the civilians move back and forth as Naruto was helped out of his robes. Once out of his robes, Naruto put his father's blue shirt and pants on, and with a bit of tucking and rolling, they were able to make them fit. Naruto then looked at the cloak on the table as he picked it up and put it on, easily the cloak slid on as he felt a sense of power come over him when he did so. Alright, last thing. Naruto reached down for his hat as he placed it behind him and tied the strings around his waist, something he had read that the cages always did when traveling, and something he had seen the old man do a time or two. Once his outfit was fully on, Naruto felt a lot more comfortable as he called out to Kakashi, how do I look Kakashi-sensei? Hmm. Kakashi looked behind him and went wide-eyed as he saw Naruto with his back turned towards Kakashi, the kanji for 5th Hokage in view with a hat around the waist, arms crossed and his head looking back with a smirk, and for just a moment, Kakashi thought he was in the past. However, he quickly regained himself as he coughed into his hand and nodded. Looks good, although since you're very outwardly saying you're Hokage, we're gonna have to travel to the hospital in secret. We can just take the carriage can't we? Well we could, but people might be a little suspicious that the Hokage decided to randomly travel to the hospital, even more so on the day Sasuke woke up. Some might begin to think Sasuke's actually the Hokage, while others might begin to suspect you. Alright, well I guess I can just take the cloak and hat off then. Naruto went to do so, but before he could, another puff of smoke appeared, however this time it wasn't Dragon, as the one wearing the Anbu mask had a ponytail and a fish mask. Hokage-sama. Ayaya. Naruto immediately knew it wasn't Dragon, since the voice was now clearly a female. My name is Tilapia, Lord. I am one of the Anbu responsible for your protection, and I serve under Dragon. I can assist you in getting to the hospital undetected sir. I just have to use my hiding with camouflage technique and you will be able to get there undetected. We will also apply to you to hide your scent and chakra. Naruto seemed impressed as his respect for the Anbu grew a bit more, they had always been easy to trick and get around when Sirotobi was Hokage, but it seemed they had been much more protective of him in the few hours he had been in office. Naruto nodded with a smile as he spoke. Alright, let's do that. Lord. Tilapia began applying them as Kakashi walked by and to the door. I'll meet you at the hospital. Naruto, I'll prepare some jonin to block a pathway for you. Alright, thanks Kakashi. Kakashi nodded as he left, Naruto taking a deep breath afterward, knowing that this meeting would forever change his relationship with Sakura and Sasuke. After having the technique applied to him, Naruto slowly vanished until he was completely invisible, not being seen by the naked eye. After a moment, Tilapia lowered her hands as she spoke Hokage-sama, though you are now invisible to the general public, tracking ninja will still be able to detect you. We will first apply a bug to you so we can keep track of your lord, and then we shall apply it to hide the rest of you from trackers. Naruto nodded as another puff of smoke appeared with another Anbu agent with a wolf mask. My name is Wolf. I shall personally keep track of you while you are hiding Hokage-sama. Naruto just nodded again as the Anbu raised his hand, and a bug flew out of the sleeve of Wolf's attire and landed on Naruto's neck before walking down and into Naruto's shirt as it vanished from view, thanks to the dot. Once the bug was on Wolf vanished as Tilapia spoke again Lord, we now have a tracking bug on you that only Wolf will be able to keep track of. I shall now apply this to you, however, I must regretfully say that your voice can still be heard. While we could hide even your voice, I'm afraid that we must allow you to be able to make contact with us at any time. D that's fine, no reason to apologize. It's needed after all. Tilapia didn't say anything as she moved her hands and began forming another hand sign, and soon enough, Naruto felt a heavy presence on him just like the day before, most likely the same being applied that allows him to go undetected. Please call for me, if you need anything sir. Tilapia vanished as Naruto stood in his office invisible, as Jiraiya leaned against the wall by the door. Hey sensei? Hmm? What's up? Hope you're not asking me how you look because I'm afraid I can't see past this dot. Ah no it's not that, I just need you to do me a favor. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow as he pushed himself off the wall, looking in the general area of Naruto. 
Go to my apartment and grab the box of scrolls under my bed. I have a few I want to keep here in the office. Oh? Any reason why? Let's just say that they may be needed for some future endeavors. Naruto was more than a bit worried as he walked out onto the street, while he had faith in the Anbu that were set on protecting him, he was still unsure about how much this would actually work. However, much to his relief, nobody noticed him as he walked out onto the streets and into the public. This might have worked a little too well, as he found himself continually weaving and waving his way through, hoping not to bump into anybody and cause a ton of confusion when they saw they ran into nothing. Yet as the sun was at its peak, so people were going to and fro from everywhere, making it almost impossible for Naruto to dodge everyone, as he finally ducked onto one of the side streets and decided to take the long route. After taking a few turns and mentally cursing himself for almost going in a circle, Naruto came upon an interesting scene that made him tense up a little when he saw it. Sitting on a side bench was Hinata and Shino, the both of them seemingly waiting patiently for something. However, Kiba was pacing back and forth as he suddenly yelled out man, this sucks. Why did Kurunai-sensei make us wait here? Naruto raised an eyebrow as he slowed down some and began walking past them, worry creeping into his brain, since they were the best tracking team of all the new genin, yet none of them seemed to notice him as he began walking by. Like seriously, don't you guys think it sucks that we have to sit here and just wait? Naruto wondered what they were waiting for, especially since he had assigned them to follow through with a peace agreement he had been able to forge with Suna like. It makes you wonder what they're talking about doesn't it? What do you think of Hinata? Naruto saw Hinata shrink down a little as the conversation with Kurunai from earlier entered into his head, almost making him give an outward sign before restraining himself. Naruto kept walking until he was entirely past them, the last thing he heard was Hinata giving a Mika. I wonder what they're waiting on. It sounds like Kurunai forced them to stay here for some reason, I wonder what for. Naruto didn't really have time to ponder the question as he kept walking, thoughts of Sakura and Sasuke entering his mind. Well regardless, I have other matters to attend to at the moment, like telling two of my best friends that I'm now Hokage. Once he was far enough away, Naruto did give an outward sign as he kept walking towards the hospital. As the hospital came into view, Naruto suddenly felt a sudden pit form in the bottom of his stomach, as if everything he had ever eaten in his life suddenly vanished. It was a type of nervousness he hadn't felt since his exam to become a genin, and it was also a type of nervousness that wanted to consume him. Despite that, Naruto kept walking until he was in front of the hospital, civilians and shinobi going in and out of the building, carrying the usual things such as flowers or homemade meals. Naruto scanned over the front of the hospital until he saw Kakashi leaning against the wall a few feet from the door, reading the book he always carried around with him. Taking a deep breath and making sure the area was somewhat clear, Naruto ran over to Kakashi as he slowly spoke Kakashi-sensei. Kakashi didn't look up from his book as he responded. So you're here, took you longer than I expected. Sorry, I had to take a few side roads to avoid running into someone by accident. Well that explains it, you were always a bit clumsy. H hey I am. W well anyway, what's the plan? Kakashi shifted a bit as his eye looked over to the entrance. Head inside, and you should see Inoichi standing beside the receptionist's desk, whisper to him that it's you, and he will lead you to the floor with Sasuke's room, where the Anbu can safely dispel the on you, since the Jonin has it closed off. The receptionists have been told of the plan, so they don't allow any family members onto that floor for the time being. Inoichi? Oh right, he's Eno's father right? Yeah, that's him, also don't refer to yourself as Naruto, if anything refer to yourself as the Hokage. It's just a safety procedure, that's all. Alright, got it. Wait a minute, I thought you were going to be joining me, Kakashi-sensei. What are you talking about? I'm already up there. On cue, Kakashi suddenly vanished into a puff of smoke, Naruto immediately recognizing the dot. The shadow clone, huh? Well, if Kakashi-sensei is already up there, then maybe he's already eased them into the news. Maybe. As the gravity of the situation got heavier and heavier, Naruto gulped as he walked over towards the door and entered into the hospital. As soon as Naruto came into the hospital, the smell of medicine and freshly picked flowers filled his nostrils as low talking and papers being flipped could be heard. Naruto immediately noticed Inoichi standing beside the receptionist's desk as he scanned the area, almost like a hawk as many of the people in the waiting room avoided his gaze, his reputation is unwidely known. Naruto made his way over to Inoichi, carefully avoiding people and objects until he was right beside him as he leaned up and whispered. Inoichi, it's me, the Hokage. Inoichi didn't say anything as he pushed himself off the wall, making the receptionist tense up a bit as he started walking towards the stairs, with Naruto quietly following behind him, as the receptionists whispered to one another with worried expressions. Knowing that a moving was a sign the Hokage was here. 
Inoichi began walking up the stairs with Naruto close behind, carefully looking behind each corner to make sure no one was coming down as they continued up, the more floors they passed, the fewer people passed by, until finally, they reached the level that housed Sasuke's room. As soon as Naruto saw the hallway, he was surprised at how many jonin were actually present. Several Anbu agents were also present as they stood at angels to make sure each section of the floor was covered. As soon as Inoichi stepped onto the floor, everyone suddenly tensed up, and soon enough, Tilapia appeared as she spoke. Hokage-sama, do I have permission to lift the technique? Yeah, it's fine now. She nodded as she formed the hand sign, and soon Naruto came back into the field of view. As soon as he could be seen, all of the Anbu quickly went down onto a knee in front of him, while the Jonin all gave bows towards him. Naruto still wasn't used to such displays as he felt his face heat up, as he mentally cursed himself for not having his hat on as he started walking forward. Everyone kept their eyes on Naruto until he appeared in front of Sasuke's room, which had been guarded by two Anbu who were on their knees as Naruto approached. Taking one last gulp and saying a silent prayer to whoever might listen, Naruto reached forward and grabbed the door as he quickly entered the room. Once he was in the room, he immediately saw Kakashi on the wall right in front of the door, as Kakashi immediately eyed Naruto when he entered Ah, finally decided to show up Naruto. Naruto gave a small awkward laugh as he closed the door behind him quickly to hide the kneeling Anbu, as he slowly crept forward until he was right at the cutoff wall, as he saw fully into the room. He looked over as Sakura immediately smiled at him and said, Hey Naruto. I'm glad to see they let you through. Let me through? Yeah. Apparently, the entire hospital has been on lockdown because of a few escaped patients, so Kakashi Sensei has been forcing us to stay in here until they give the signal for us to leave. Naruto cast a glance towards Kakashi, who had his ever casual look as Naruto returned it to Sakura. I see, why yeah they didn't really say anything about that, though maybe I should have found it weird that they gave me an escort up here. He. Sakura nodded as her eyes noticed Naruto's new clothes, making her use a questioning tone huh? What's with the new clothes? Oh, these. I just thought it would be nice to try something different, that's all. I guess, you always did wear that orange sweatshirt and pants, though I don't really know if blue works for you or not, especially with that cloak. Naruto felt his pride take a hit as he tried to ignore Sakura's comments. W well, how's Sasuke? Sakura returned to her earlier good mood as she leaned back. Well, why don't you ask him? When Sakura leaned back, she revealed Sasuke, who was leaning his back against the wall, as he gave a low smirk to Naruto. I hate to say it, but I have to agree, blue really isn't your style. Naruto would have felt his pride take another hit, but the relief of seeing Sasuke okay easily made up for it, as he gave a huge smile towards Sasuke. I'm glad to see you're doing okay. Sasuke kept his smirk as he shrugged. It was just some sand, nothing as simple as that is going to take me down. Well, I'm glad to hear. It was a tough fight for sure, but I'm glad we were able to take him down together. Heh, I would have taken him out on my own if it wasn't for that surprise attack, but I guess thanks for backing me up. Though Sasuke used a somewhat superior tone, he also mixed in a bit of sarcasm, as Naruto kept his smile. Yeah, anytime. So, Kakashi-sensei, what's the plan? Sasuke looked at Kakashi who just raised an eyebrow. Hmm? What do you mean? I mean are we going to launch a counter-attack? If we are, then I want to be involved, especially since I want to fight Gara again. Sasuke had Venom leak through, obviously, he wasn't done with Gara as he hated the fact he had to be helped in his first fight, though he would never outright admit it. Bakashi just kept his eye on Sasuke as he spoke well. About that. Bakashi looked over towards Naruto, who felt more sweat run down his face as he gulped. Would you like to explain it to Naruto? Sasuke and Sakura looked at each in confusion before they looked over at Naruto, who had a nervous look on his face. Yeah, I guess I should. Wait, explain what? Sakura looked back over towards Kakashi as she spoke, confusion obvious in her voice. What should Naruto explain to Sensei? Sakura. Kakashi didn't even look at her as he kept his gaze on Naruto. Please don't speak until Naruto has spoken. Sakura was surprised at the words as she meekly turned back towards Naruto, who was giving a small smile as he looked at the ground. Taking one final deep breath, Naruto looked up at them. Well, Sasuke. You don't know this but. The old man, Saratobi sama died during the attack. Sasuke was a bit caught off by this as a somewhat surprised look appeared on his face before his more casual look took over. The Hokage was killed. Yeah, his funeral is due to take place in a few days. However, the daimyo wasted no time in picking a successor, as the fifth Hokage had already been chosen and approved. The fifth huh? Naruto nodded as he stepped out a bit, still not showing his full body as he continued. Yeah, the fifth Hokage. There's someone you know actually, someone we all know. You know who it is? Yeah, I do actually. Wait a minute. 
Sakura yelled out as she looked at Naruto in confusion. How do you know who the Hokage is, Naruto? Just yesterday we were all talking and... Sakura. I said not to speak while Naruto is speaking. Sakura looked over at Kakashi with a bit of fear in her eyes, not knowing why Kakashi was so aggressive in his tone. That's enough Kakashi. She has a right to ask questions, I did decide to tell them. Both Sasuke and Sakura were shocked at Naruto not only referring to Kakashi by name only, but also the tone he used. However, what shocked them even more was how Kakashi responded right, sorry. Sir. Yes sir. W what's going on here? Sakura was incredibly confused as she looked between Naruto and Kakashi Naruto, how can you talk like that to sensei? A and Kakashi sensei, W why did you call Naruto sir? Kakashi didn't say anything as Naruto gave a small smile toward Sakura as he picked back up Sakura, Sasuke, the only way I can answer that is by showing you. Taking one more deep breath, Naruto walked entirely out and after looking over their confused faces, Naruto clenched his fists as he turned around. Immediately Sakura's eyes went wide as she moved her hands up and over her mouth, while Sasuke just stared, disbelief in his eyes, the two of them doing so because of the kanji and the hat on Naruto's back. Sakura. Sasuke. I am the fifth Hokage of Konoha. The two of them just kept staring at the back of Naruto, neither of them saying anything as shock and disbelief had hit them like a ton of bricks. Sakura had her hands over her mouth as she tried to stifle any shouts of shock or excitement, while Sasuke just looked at Naruto's back with not only disbelief, but also with a sense that this wasn't real. Kakashi just stared at them as he awaited their responses, knowing that the shock could provoke them to do something stupid, or rather, cause Sasuke to do something stupid. The seconds that passed felt like minutes as Naruto had closed his eyes, waiting for them to speak first, he owed them that much at the very least. The silence was finally broken as Sakura slowly lowered her hands from her mouth, which was still agape as she struggled to find the right words to this. K Kakashi sensei, this has to be a joke. Sakura looked over at Kakashi with a voice that sounded like it didn't know whether or not to be excited or not, like if Sakura was trying to decide what feelings she should be feeling at the moment. Kakashi didn't say anything, as he knew that words wouldn't get fully through to them. So instead, Kakashi placed his fist over his chest in salute as he dropped to one knee as he faced Naruto, making Sakura go even more wide-eyed as she slowly turned her head back to Naruto. Then Naruto, why you? T the fifth Hokage. Ah yeah, I'm the fifth Hokage Sakura. Sakura barely listened to the words from Naruto as she tried to comprehend what she had just seen, heard and learned in the span of only a few minutes, if even that. Sakura just shook her head, not wanting to believe the reality that was right in front of her. D that can't be true. And Naruto, why you're just a genin. Naruto didn't say anything as Kakashi looked up from his bow towards Naruto and spoke. Okage-sama. The words from Kakashi sunk deep into Sakura and Sasuke as reality started to hit them even harder. We prepared some guests in the event of this type of reaction, with your permission, we're willing to let them in here. It should be noted that we told them about your promotion, however, we're more than willing to remove that memory, should you deem them not needed. Naruto didn't hesitate as replied, send them in. Kakashi nodded as he clapped his hands together, the signal they had come up with if anybody was needed as the door to the room opened, and one of the jonin walked in before immediately kneeling. Kakashi looked at the kneeling as he spoke. Send witness pair one in. Understood. They got up and quickly left the room as nobody spoke, the gravity of everything weighing heavy until a knock was heard on the doors as they reappeared. Hokage-sama. May I present Mibuki and Kazashi Hirano. Sakura quickly looked over as she heard the names as two individuals walked in, the both of them stopping as Mibuki was mouth agape when she saw Naruto, whispering to her husband the yellow flash. Kazashi didn't respond for a moment until he brought himself back into reality as he shook his head. Hey, just because he has golden hair doesn't mean he's the fourth haha. Kazashi laughed as he patted his wife's shoulder, knocking her out of her own trance as she shot him a glare. I know that. But the resemblance is uncanny. Mom? Dad? Sakura interrupted their little banter as she looked at them, confusion still fully entrenched on her face as she stared at them, W what are you doing here? Kazashi gave a smile as he walked over to his daughter and placed a hand on her shoulder well, it's a bit of a long story and I still don't quite know the details myself, but from what I've been told, it seems that your teammate was named the fifth Hokage of our village. D that's what I see and that's what I hear, but I can't believe it. What can't you believe dear? Mibuki walked over to Sakura and gave her a reassuring smile. She could only imagine the emotions her daughter was currently going through. I mean, how can they name Naruto, Hokage? Oh come now dear, you've known Naruto ever since you two were put on the same team. Surely you know how strong he must be, I mean, after all, I heard that he's the one who finished off that sand monster that Tsuna had with them. Sasuke clenched his hands when he heard Mibuki's words, yet the only one who noticed was Kakashi. 
Sakura just slowly shook her head as she tried to speak slowly. It's not strength. I it's what you and dad always told me about Naruto. Naruto heard Sakura faintly as he stayed still, pain flicking through his heart, yet he now knew the reason, and he couldn't say anything. Mabuki bit down on her lip as she looked at her husband with a look that scared him. Well dear, I think you'd better tell her. They are right. However, the rule throughout the village was that we weren't allowed to speak on the matter. Kizashi looked back at Naruto, who had still not turned around yet spoke anyway. A lot of things are going to change now that I'm Hokage, so you can go ahead and tell her. Oh and also. Naruto looked back at the couple with a smile of genuine happiness as he spoke. Thanks for calling me the Yellow Flash, it's nice to be compared to my dad. Sakura, knowing who the Yellow Flash was thanks to her history books and how much her mother had boasted about him, again was shell-shocked when she heard that from Naruto. Mabuki wasn't any better as her own eyes went wide as she struggled to speak to dad. T the Yellow Flash. Kizashi on the other hand just smirked as he looked back at Naruto. So, they finally told you? Why you knew? Mabuki looked up at Kizashi who just gave a low laugh. Being a ninja gets you some pretty interesting information. Giving another laugh, he turned back to Sakura as a semi-serious look took over his face Sakura, ever since you were young, we've told you to never go near Naruto. We told you that he was someone you didn't want to associate with, someone to never talk to, someone to never have anything to do with, right? Why yeah, that's right. We even doubled down on that when you came complaining that he called you cute, right? All right. Built appeared on Kakashi's face as he sighed. The truth is, the reason we didn't want you to associate with him is a reason that I have never agreed with, yet it was something we foolishly tried to push onto you and into your head. W what do you mean? Kizashi bit down on his lip as the silence in the room tried to become deafening. Thirteen years ago, a nine-tails fox, the Kaiubi, attacked our village. Your mother was still pregnant with you, so you weren't even alive for it. However, one person was not only alive for it, but they were actually born on that day. That person was the fifth Hokage, Naruto Uzumaki. Kizashi glanced back before he continued. We don't know the full details about Naruto, but we do know that his mother, Kishina Uzumaki, the wife of the fourth Hokage, was the one who held the Kaiubi inside of her. Inside of her? What do you mean? What I mean is this, she was what we call it, a person who has one of the nine-tailed beasts sealed inside of them. This was done to protect the world from the beast's rampage, while also giving the village an invaluable weapon should war ever come. However, the seal broke, and the Kaiubi rampaged through the village, killing the fourth Hokage in the process. I see, so that's why the demon attacked us, I I never knew. Of course you didn't, because after the third came back into power, he ordered for any mention of Kishina being to be wiped, and never to be mentioned to anyone ever again. He hoped that people would eventually forget about the incident, and to eventually let Naruto live a peaceful life where people no longer blamed him for the attack. Blamed him for the attack, why did people blame Naruto? Well, for a few reasons actually. The main one being that the reason the seal broke was because Kishina gave birth, and her child was Naruto. The clans knew this, and many shinobi knew this, including me. However, the third instructed us never to tell Naruto who his parents were. The hope was that Naruto would live like any other normal child, but. That didn't happen. If that was the hope, then why did you and mom tell me not to ever associate with him? Kizashi and Mabuki looked at each other with guilty looks as Kizashi gulped. It's because of the higher-ups. Many ninja held a grudge towards Naruto, as they blamed him for the Kaiubi attack, however, many of the higher-ups seemed to hold an even bigger grudge for some reason. They pressured not only the shinobi, but also the average civilian not to associate with Naruto, and ran a very successful smear campaign against him that made people who didn't even know Naruto hate him. This ran to the kids as well, as many of us were forced to feed you lies in hopes that Naruto would live alone, never to have any friends and eventually lose his will. D that's terrible. Yeah, and I felt guilty every single day I had to come up with more and more lies to tell you. Hell, I felt guilty when I saw him eating alone, and I couldn't even go say something to him, because I never knew when a set of eyes might be watching from a distance. One wrong mistake, and I could have everything, including you, taken from me. I could never risk it. Nobody could ever risk it, that's why many of us fed you more and more lies. Sakura just stared at her dad with mixed emotions, tears in her eyes, yet she didn't know why. Perhaps it was because she considered Naruto as a sort of friend, so it was horrible to hear something like that. Or maybe it was because her parents had lied to her all her life, and it took something as drastic as Naruto becoming Hokage for them to admit the truth. She honestly didn't know, though if she was honest with herself, it was a mixture of both. Sakura, I hope you can forgive me for all the lies I had told you. Your mother was forced to go along with it, so she's not at fault, yet I am. Kizashi turned around fully as he gulped Nar.Hokage-sama, I sincerely apologize. 
if I hadn't fallen for the fear tactics of the higher ups, then maybe you and Sakura could have become friends, or even something more. Sakura had a tint of pink appear when she heard her dad speak, yet Naruto only smiled and replied, I can't blame you to be honest, in just a few hours I've been Hokage, I've learned just how much power someone in my position wields. While I don't know about other top officials, I'm sure they also hold power beyond the average shinobi. You did nothing wrong Kazashi, you put your family. First, I can't blame you for that. If I had a family, I would most certainly do the same thing. Hokage-sama. Kazashi, usually willing to break a tense moment with a joke, just looked down as he clenched his fists, as his wife placed her hand on his shoulder and spoke. Here, we're both at fault, don't try to take the blame fully onto yourself. Despite her words, Kazashi just kept staring down as all the memories ran through his mind, all the decisions he wished he had done differently. Sakura just stared at her dad with tears on her face as she stood up and placed a hand on his other shoulder D dad, I I forgive you. Even if you do, it won't change the past. Kazashi bit down on his lip, his family trying to console him, when. Kazashi, are you a shinobi of Konoha? Naruto was the one to speak as Kazashi looked up at him, confusion on his face as he nodded. I'm not on active duty anymore, but yes, I'm always ready should I be called upon. Naruto turned partway around as he crossed his arms and gave him a sideways look. Then you need to act like one and lead by example for your daughter. They act like one? Yeah. I already told you, I don't blame you for putting the safety of your family first, and you shouldn't either. Despite what many people may think, I did have friends when I was growing up. In fact, not only did I have friends, but I had a sensei who looked after me and encouraged me every step along the way. If you continue to blame yourself, then you're failing as both a father and a shinobi. You have to move forward, after all. Naruto turned fully back around as he gave a smile to the family. I consider Sakura as one of my dearest friends, so obviously you did something right. Sakura's eyes went wide as Kazashi stared at Naruto with sunken eyes before he closed them and gritted his teeth as he opened them back up, full of determination Hokage-sama. I understand. Kazashi dropped to one knee as Sakura stared at him, and after a moment Mabuki followed suit as Sakura just took a step back to look at her parents, before she looked up and locked eyes with Naruto, a smile on his face, as she felt butterflies in her stomach Sakura. You and your parents should go on home for the day. You all need to soak in the information and also talk to one another, as I get the feeling you have many questions. Sakura just kept staring at Naruto as so many things raced through her mind, as just minutes ago, Naruto was the goofy dork who had a few cool moments, but not only was he nothing compared to Sasuke, he was also a monster her parents had warned her about. But now. Naruto was the leader of her village, and he was someone that had called her one of his closest friends. He was someone with determination and never held a grudge, he was someone who fought for his beliefs, he was someone you could depend on. He was someone that defeated Gara, who Sasuke had lost against, he was someone her parents had lied about for years because of background politics. He was the fifth Hokage of Konoha. Sakura eventually recompassed herself as she slowly nodded, both of her parents getting up as Kazashi turned around and placed a hand on Sakura. Let's go home for today, Sakura. Sakura looked at her parents and nodded, the two of them walking towards the door, as they each gave a bow towards Naruto when they walked past him. When Sakura got to Naruto, she just stared at him as he smiled at her Sakura, continue to improve as a ninja, and don't hold a grudge against your parents. Especially if you want to impress a certain someone. Naruto looked back at Sasuke, though Sakura just kept staring at him as she just gulped and nodded as she left, taking more and more looks back until she was out of the room and the door had closed. As soon as Sakura and her family had left, the only people remaining were Naruto, Kakashi, and Sasuke. Sasuke just kept his look of disbelief as he had clenched his hands together and gritted his teeth, a sense of shock resonating through his body. Naruto just looked at Sasuke as he closed his eyes once again and spoke to Kakashi, can you leave us alone? Hmm? I've been assigned as your personal bodyguard, leaving you alone. It's fine, I'll call you if I need you. Kakashi just looked at Naruto with a somewhat worried look before he just nodded and pushed himself up, walking by Naruto to leave, but not before whispering to him. If anything happens, we'll be in here right away. Naruto didn't say anything as Kakashi walked on by and out of the room, leaving the two friends alone, as neither of them said anything, neither knowing what the right words to say would be. Naruto opened his eyes as his arms fell to his side as gave a smile Sasuke I. Naruto. Sasuke interrupted Naruto, causing him to quiet down and lose his smile. Was what that woman said true? The part about you defeating Gara by yourself. Well, he was in a weakened state when I finally caught up to the two of you. However, not long after me and you joined up, you were knocked out, and I had to finish him off. Sasuke narrowed his gaze as he leaned his head back and looked Naruto in the eyes, confusion rampant throughout his face. 
he still had plenty of energy left when we were fighting, I thought I just didn't remember most of the fight, but if it was because I was knocked out, then that means you finished my battle for me, Sasuke spoke with disdain in his voice, something that wasn't lost on Naruto. Sasuke, I was only able to win because you had been able to weaken Gara. Remember, I just had my match with Niji, so it's not like I was fully healthy or anything. If you hadn't fought him first, then I would have never been able to beat him. You say that, but it's obvious that the village recognizes your strength over mine. After all, you were named Hokage. Naruto sighed as he shook his head. I asked Kakashi Sensei, and according to him, plenty of people were stronger than me, and more than likely more qualified than me. I'm sure you're one of them Sasuke, I was just named Hokage because they say they see a lot of potential in me. So, you're saying they see none in me then? That's not what I'm saying at all, Sasuke. Hell, I'm sure not only you, but guys like Shikamaru, Niji, Lee, or even someone like Ino might have more potential than I do. They all have bloodlines just like you, but I have nothing like that. I don't have any special abilities, everything I know is three years of training and hard work. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they chose me just to keep tabs on me. Hmm? Keep tabs on you? Yeah. As Sakura's dad mentioned, my mother held the Kaiubi inside of her, and the reason it escaped was because she gave birth to me. Yet what happened to the Kaiubi? Well it's true that the fourth defeated it at the cost of his life, they never revealed what happened to the fox demon itself. The truth of the matter is that I became the new holder of the Kaiubi. You? Sasuke had some genuine surprise appear on his face as Naruto nodded. I was always called a demon growing up, and everyone around me always hated me and called me names or attacked me. Yet the worst reactions I got were when people just ignored me and acted like I didn't exist. I always wondered why this was, as not even the old man would tell me. Then one night, Iruka sensei was being attacked thanks to me being tricked, and I suddenly felt a surge of power run through me, allowing me to channel hundreds of shadow clones to save him. The same thing happened on the bridge when Haku attacked you, a sudden burst of hatred and power ran through me, all because I saw you on the verge of death. I always thought I had something inside of me, but I could never imagine that it was the Kaiubi. So when you were able to break Haku's mirrors, that was the reason why. Sasuke went quiet for a moment as he kept staring at Naruto as he looked through his memories. The last thing I remember during the fight against Gara was that you summoned a giant toad before it suddenly turned into the Kaiubi. Was that you releasing the demon? No, that was just a simple transformation. We needed something fast and powerful, so the Kaiubi was the first thing that popped into my mind. I still don't know why since I really didn't know the beast until now, but if I had to guess, it was because the monster inside of me was the cause. I see. Sasuke didn't know what to think as Naruto talked to him, he was initially displeased with himself, because if Naruto became Hokage, that would mean Naruto had surpassed him in terms of strength, yet the more Naruto talked. The more it sounded like it was more so because of the Kaiubi than Naruto, but. Still, they can't just name you Hokage because of one fighter potential, they have to have a bigger sample size. Yeah, I've thought about that. But the more I think about it, the more confused I get as to why they named me Hokage. Who knows, maybe this is all one big place on me, and I'm just home right now sleeping away. Whatever the case, I have a duty to fulfill now. Naruto, no matter what you think, just remember that I am and always will be stronger than you. Naruto looked at Sasuke with a surprised look as Sasuke continued. After all, now that you've become Hokage, you need someone to chase after so you don't get complacent. Sasuke had a smirk appear on his face, as Naruto kept looking at him with a surprised look, before a small laugh escaped his lips Sasuke, at the end of the day, I'm still the same Naruto. I may have a great title and some fancy clothes, but I'm still who I've always been. Meaning you're still my best friend and my greatest rival, don't forget that. Sasuke kept his smirk as he shrugged. Well, you're still a dope. Though, perhaps dobe-sama would better fit now. Naruto couldn't help but let out another laugh as he returned the shrug. If you call me Dobe Sama, then you better be on one knee when you say it. Eh, we'll see about that. The two of them gave little laughs as Naruto turned towards the door, stuffing his hands into his pocket. I have some things to attend to, but Sasuke, when you're healthy, let's do some training together, it's been a while after all. Alright, though it might be a bad look when the Hokage can't keep up with me during training. Well guess I can't hold back then huh? Naruto waved goodbye as he left the room, leaving Sasuke by himself. Once he was alone, Sasuke clenched his hands together as he muttered damn it. As soon as Naruto left the room, all of the Anbu kneeled towards him as Kakashi walked over. How did it go? Well, I think it went well. Much less crying than when Sakura if anything. Naruto gave a small laugh as he began walking to the stairs with Kakashi and Toil Man. I am tired though, from having to get up early to having that ceremony to just everything else. Well it is your first day on the job after all, so it's going to take some getting used to. 
don't push yourself too hard, we can't have the new Hokage passing out after all. Naruto chuckled as the pair stopped at the stairs leading down as they began to follow him. In any case, you have a busy day tomorrow, so it might be best to go ahead and take the rest of the day off. Huh? What's tomorrow? Well first off is that you're going to be meeting with the village elders, they had tried to go around talking to you by requesting either Jurei or me, but they didn't allow it for obvious reasons. The elders were the third's personal advisors, so I'm sure they're going to go do everything they can to make sure they have as much of an influence on you as they can. You talk like that's a bad thing. Well, let's just say that a lot of them are hoping for you to bring in some fresh blood so to say. I see, well guess that's something else I need to get started on doing. Yeah, also tomorrow is the last day of the private viewing for Siratobi sama's body. Private viewing? Naruto looked at Kakashi with a questioning look, not knowing what he was talking about. For the past three days, Saratobi samas body has been kept at his private home for the family members to pay respect to. Tomorrow is the last day it will be kept there until it's moved to the Hokage Manor for the public viewing in three days, with the day after that being the funeral. Naruto nodded as he crossed his arms and began to think, with one person directly coming to mind. Konohamaru. Naruto viewed the kid as sort of an apprentice, after all, he did teach him both the shadow clone and the harem. Usually, Naruto saw him running around causing trouble with his friends, but ever since the attack, he's been absent from the public view. Naruto bit down on his lip as he looked up at Kakashi. Would it be inappropriate for me to visit the family? I wouldn't have brought it up. They know a new Hokage has just been named, so I'm sure they would be happy to see the third successor pay his respects to them. You don't have to, of course, you have plenty of paperwork that needs to be done after all. Naruto went white when he heard the paperwork line as he quickly shook his head. They on oh, I'm more than happy to visit them. Eh uh -huh. He. Oh, but I do want to talk to one of them before then. I'm guessing it's the third grandchild. Yeah. Naruto thought for a moment until he called out Dragon. A puff of smoke appeared as Dragon was kneeling beside Naruto. Yes. Hokage-sama. Do you know where Konohamaru Siratobi is currently located? Lord. The honorable grandson of the third Hokage is currently on top of Hokage Rock, sir. More specifically, he's sitting on top of the third Hokage's mural. Naruto nodded, he would be a bit more weirded out than Dragon answered right away, but he had already learned the Anbu weren't regular shinobi. All right then. I'm heading there now to meet with him. Lord. I must inform you that he's currently there with his class. In honor of Siratobi sama Iruki Yamino has taken them there to give a history lesson on Siratobi samas life and how he became Hokage. However, Kinohamaru went to the third mural and sat down by himself. Naruto had a painful look in his eye as he nodded all right, well let them be. Iruka already knows about my promotion thanks to earlier, so we won't have to hide anything, just make sure the kids don't see the back of my cloak. Lord. Dragon vanished in a puff of smoke as Naruto undid his hat from around his waist and placed it in his cloak to hide it. Well, let's go to Kakashi. How do you plan on getting there? You can take the cloak off as you mentioned before, be the easiest thing to do. Well, I want to wear this and keep it on when I talk to Konohamaru, so I'll just use the invisible one again. Well, if that's what you want. Yeah, alright, let's go. Alright everyone, stay in the circle, you might fall if you run out. Haruka yelled to the children as they all played together, their lesson for the day being practically over. While some of them played games such as ninja, especially the boys, others preferred to play house, especially the girls, with some exceptions. As Aruka watched over them with a smile, he didn't notice the footsteps behind him until a voice rang out Hey Aruka Sensei. Oh hey Naruto. Naruto it took a moment for Aruka to catch on to the fact something was off with Naruto being here, especially with him now being the Hokage. W what are you doing here? A and what's with the outfit change? It's kind of a long story so far, but long story short, these are the clothes I'll be wearing as Hokage from now on. Any reason why? Again it's kind of a long story. I'll tell you when we're in a more relaxed space sometime. Haruka just nodded as he looked over the cloak Naruto had on, examining the features on it. That's quite the cloak you have there, what's the story behind it? Eh, just look at the back. Haruka raised an eyebrow as he walked behind and looked at the back of the cloak as his eyes suddenly went wide. And Naruto. Why you're practically telling the whole world your Haruka slapped his own hand on his mouth before he bent down and whispered that you're Hokage. It's fine, I walked over here invisible thanks to some I believe. I'm also not worried about the kids because it seems they're playing right now. Besides, can they even read kanji? Um. Not that I'm aware of, academy rules state that kanji is only to be taught the year before their ninja test, so they'll learn next year. Ah. That's why you're not worried then. Right, though I've still instructed the anbu to hide the back of my cloak from the kids, just in case. Well, you're not here to see the kids, that much is obvious. 
so what are you doing here, just enjoying the view? Hardly, I came here for before Naruto could finish, two voices ran out towards him. Naruto. Naruto and Aruka both looked over as two of the students ran towards them, as Naruto gave a big smile. Buden. Mogi. Naruto gave a smile as they both ran up to them as a heavy feeling hit their shoulders, causing them both to look at each other and shrug it off, not realizing it was the Anbu's dot. What are you doing here Naruto, have you finally decided to play ninja with us? Mogi spoke as she seemed ready to go, still holding Naruto to his promise of him someday playing ninja with her and her friends. Why yeah Naruto, you come to play. Yudin quietly spoke afterward as Naruto just kept his smile on them as he stuffed his hands into his cloak's pockets. Sorry guys, not today, I came here for some other reason actually. Some other reason? Does it have anything to do with that new cloak of yours? Like, are you going to take a really cool picture or something? Mogi seemed ready to participate in whatever Naruto was planning, yet again Naruto just shook his head. Sorry but it's not that either. I actually came here to see Kinohimaru. Oh. I see. Well, good luck then. He hasn't talked to us ever since the village was attacked, and I think it's because his grandfather died. Mogi had a sad look on her face as she spoke, making Naruto sadly nod. Yeah, so I've heard. And not only that, B but whenever we try to talk to him, he either pushes us away or gets angry with us. Yudin quietly spoke next as Naruto again nodded. I see, well let me try talking to him, maybe I'll be able to break through to him. Naruto looked back at Aruka as Naruto whispered towards him. Now you know why I'm here. Aruka nodded as he pointed towards the third's head. He's been over there ever since we arrived. Thanks, I'll go talk to him. Naruto turned and walked over to the third's mural, Aruka noticing the sudden disappearance of the kanji on his back, before realizing it was because Mogi and Yudin had come over. I see, it's based on range, guess that's why they couldn't hide it all the way over here. Well, I hope whatever Naruto says to Konohamaru works, I hate seeing him so down. Though, I can relate to losing someone close to you. Naruto slowly walked over to Konohamaru, taking slow steps as sadness and regret were plastered onto his face. Saying another silent prayer to whoever would listen, Naruto walked over to him as he spoke Hey Konohamaru. I said to leave me al dado. Boss. Kinohimaru was about to snap as he turned around, yet his demeanor completely changed as he saw Naruto, immediately noticing the new clothes he had on Why are you here? Oh I was just taking a stroll, and I saw you were sitting here, so I figured I would come over and see what's up. HMPH, well you're wasting your time boss. I really don't feel like talking right now. Despite his words, Kinohimaru seemed to look towards the spot beside him, as if to motion Naruto over, which he immediately took the hint as Naruto sat down. Don't be like that Kanohimaru, you're not one to turn away a conversation. Naruto fixed his cloak out as the two of them sat in silence, staring over the village atop of the third's mural. So, what's bothering you? Huh? What do you mean? Oh come on, I'm not stupid, something's bothering you. What is it? It's nothing. Kanohimaru, I'm one of your best friends aren't I? You can trust me. Kanohimaru went silent for a moment before he took a sigh as he began to twiddle his fingers, trying to find the right words. I feel like a weak boss. I feel like no matter what I do, nobody can depend on me. Why do you feel like that? You've never been that way before. I mean, aren't you the one who's always screaming that you're going to be Hokage? Konohimaru went silent again as he absently stared out into the village. How can I be Hokage when I can't even protect my own family? You mean the old man? Not just Gramps, everyone. I mean I couldn't protect mom, and now she's in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. My cousins never pick me to play with them because I can't do anything, whether it be playing ninja with my guy cousins or cooking with my girl cousins. Even Uncle Asuma doesn't let me do much. I hate being so useless. Konohimaru gripped his hands as Naruto stayed silent, watching quietly as a pair of birds flew overhead. I'm so useless that it finally caught up. Gramps is dead and it's all my fault. If I was stronger, I could have protected him and everybody else in the village. But instead, I was forced to retreat with my classmates. You can't blame yourself, the one who attacked us was Arachimaru, one of the strongest ninjas in the world. Not only that, but we were also betrayed by one of our allies in Sunagakur, so the deck was stacked so matter what. But even still, I should have been down on the ground fighting with the others. I shouldn't have run away and retreated. I'm a disgrace to everyone. Konohimaru held back tears as he let everything out to Naruto, who just listened and soaked everything in. You say that, but you can't really believe that can you? After all, your dream is to become Hokage someday isn't it? I mean, the two of us were in a race to see who could become Hokage first, yeah. I don't even want a position of Hokage anymore, Gramps died because of it. I mean every Hokage so far has died while in office. It's almost like the position is cursed. Naruto looked at Konohimaru before he looked down and let out a breath. 
then let me ask you a question. If the Fire Daimyo picked you as the 5th Hokage and the Jonin Council approved you, what would you say? That's a stupid question, they wouldn't. But what if they did? What if just out of the blue, with no prior warning or anything, they wanted you to continue on your grandfather's legacy, what would you say? Ikano Himeru thought over his words as he looked over Naruto. I would have to accept it. Why is that? Because it's my dream. But at the same time, I don't want to be Hokage anymore, yet I still do. I don't know how to describe the feeling of a boss. Kanohimaru looked down as Naruto gave a small smile. Then tell me how this feels and decide. Kanohimaru was about to question what Naruto meant, but all of a sudden, he felt Naruto play something on his head, and when he reached up, he felt his voice catch in his throat. D this is. Yeah, it's the hat your grandfather always wore. Kanohimaru grabbed the hat and brought it down as he looked at it, his eyes going wide as he confirmed it was the real thing. B boss, why do you have this? Why you didn't steal it, did you Kanohimaru started to point at Naruto, but Naruto quickly shot him down. Aha, no no, I would never do something like that. D then, why do you have this? Naruto gave another small laugh as he looked back out towards the village, Kanohimaru patiently waiting for an answer. I just asked you didn't I? If the fire daimyo chose you as the fifth Hokage and then the Jonin Council approved you, what would you do? Kanohimaru's eyes went wide as a thousand thoughts ran through his mind, not wanting to believe what the truth might actually be. Boss. Why you? Naruto smirked as he reached his hand out for the hat, as Kanohimaru allowed him to gently grab it as Naruto placed it on top of his own head. Kanohimaru, I'm afraid I won our little contest. Because I am the fifth Hokage and your grandfather's successor. Kanohimaru just stared at Naruto in shock, not knowing what to say as the reality of the situation seemed to fake to be real. Boss, I I. How did it feel? Huh? How did it feel to wear this hat? The hat that has been worn by some of the greatest shinobi ever to grace this planet. How did it feel? Naruto nodded as Kanohimaru struggled to find the words. Honestly, it just felt like a hat, it didn't feel special. But that's just because I'm not the rightful owner of the hat, I know that, because what you just told me boss, and seeing you wear it, you truly are the rightful owner of it. Really? You were easier to convince than Sakura and Sasuke. Well, don't get me wrong boss, it's kind of a far-fetched claim, but. That is my gramps hat. I would easily recognize a fake from the real one. You're also not one to lie to me about something like this boss, so I have no reason to doubt you. I see. Then I hope you understand that I achieved my dream of becoming Hokage, meaning that you openly reject my dream, eh? Eh oh no no. F forget what I said, I wasn't thinking right. I I still really want to become Hokage. You may have become Hokage before me, boss, but just you watch, I'll become such a good ninja that they'll have no choice but to replace you with me. Eh, I'm looking forward to it. Naruto extended his hand towards Konohimaru, who just smiled and he grasped it. Konohimaru, I'm not an old man, and I never will be. But I hope that I'm a Hokage you can call worthy of being your grandpa's successor. Konohimaru was a bit taken back by the words as tears ran down his face as he forced a smile boss, you're the only one in the world I feel comfortable with taking over from my gramps. All I ask is that you never let the village forget about him. That is one promise I will never break. You have my word. Konohimaru nodded as more tears came down his face as he tried to wipe them off before Naruto pulled him into a hug. I swear, this village will never forget your grandfather. Thanks boss. Kanohimaru wrapped his arms around Naruto as he lightly cried onto his shoulder, all the pain from everything finally getting the best of him, as he just let it all out, as the sun shined brightly down on them. The sun could be seen in the distance as it was about to set as Naruto and Kakashi were both in Naruto's apartment. While Naruto had fallen onto his bed with a long sigh, Kakashi stayed on his feet as he waited for any command Naruto might have. Man Kakashi-sensei, today was something, I feel like I could sleep forever. Well I ask that you don't quite do that, after all, you have a busy day tomorrow, then the day after that. And the day after that. Yeah yeah, I get it. A lot of stuff has to be done. Still though, when I'm introduced to the public, will I still be staying here in my apartment? It's up to you. The Hokage Tower has living quarters in it, and Saratobi Sama regularly used it on long nights, though he preferred going back to his actual home. Either way, you're well protected. The Anbu have marked this apartment as a nose own, so anything from a simple shadow clone, all the way to something like the Sharingan, are strictly forbidden around here, unless it's from authorized personnel like the Jonin. Man, they take their jobs really seriously, don't they? Well, for many of them, they were responsible for the protection of both the third and fourth, both of whom were killed. So for you, they're the strictest they've ever been. Of course, you can always order them not to be. Right right, well, while I may tone down the security, I'll always welcome it if anything. A smart decision. Naruto nodded as he yawned, falling right down onto his pillow. 
Well, I'm about to head to sleep sensei, what will you be doing? Staying here, of course, I was named your personal bodyguard, and until you dismiss me, I'll stay by your side. Naruto glanced over at him as he gave a nervous chuckle. It's fine Kakashi sensei, you can have time off you know. I mean, how long has it been since you slept? Oh, I would say a few days I guess. A few days. Really? Or shinobi, sleep is one thing you have to learn to live without. Of course, I've seen my share of battlefields and bloodshed, so I'm just more experienced in that area. Well, it's still unhealthy. Kakashi sensei, you are allowed to have the nights off. I trust the Anbu enough after all. Well, if you say so. Kakashi reached inside of his vest and pulled out his book as he began walking towards the door. I'll be here when you wake up and lead you to the elders, after that, we have the Siratobi family memorial. Right, I understand. Kakashi nodded as he opened the door and left the room, leaving the young Hokage alone in his bed as he sighed. I never knew how much work you had to put in after achieving your dream, I thought all the work came before. Still speaking of work, I wonder how the others are doing with their missions. Water country. Bowl rise for his highness. All of the shinobi saluted as the doors opened and the water daimyo walked out of his room and to the giant council table in the middle of the room, his personal council on one side and shinobi from Kurigakur on the other. Once the daimyo sat down, everyone dropped their salutes as the man who had introduced the daimyo pulled out a scroll and began reading from it. Now, shinobi of Kurigakur. You have been called here to hear daimyo-sama's choice for the fifth Mizukage of Kiri since the fourth Mizukage passed away over a month ago. As always the daimyo's decision is final and any objections will be met as an act of treason. The man folded the scroll as the water daimyo coughed into his hand and began speaking. As you know, Kiri has a rather dreadful reputation with the rest of the world at the moment due to the actions of the fourth. While many shinobi from the village welcome such a reign, I believe it to be best for the village to move in a different direction. I thought long and hard about who I wish to lead the village, it would have to be someone of great strength, most certainly. However, it also has to be someone who is willing to move away from the era known as the Bloody Mist and look for a brighter future. So, after much deliberation and such, I have finally made my choice. The water daimyo let out a sigh as a long pause followed before he lifted his hand and pointed at one of the shinobi who had been asked to attend the meeting. Mate Terumi, I name you the fifth Mizukage of Kurigakur. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video, turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.